Blub, 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 I didn't know we were on the stream. Oh shit! I need to mute the stream. Oh damn. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know we were on the stream. That was no, 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 no. That was, that was on purpose. That was on purpose. <laughs> uh, just to keep you on your toes. <laughs> oh. Hello. Hello, Hello, everybody, both YouTube and Twitch. We are back with distant travels. Hell yeah. Oh my god, this entire week has just been visual novel after visual novel, and now I gotta find a day for all these visual novels. Oh my god, I can't carry this many visual novels, <laughs> Razor. <laughs> it's when, it's kind when, of insane to me that there are so many furry-themed visual novels. I, I didn't know there were this many. There, there are a lot. You just have to look through them and make sure you follow the furry reddit very visual novel reddit forum because they do have a list a black list a black the blackout list where it's a list of uh visual novels that use ai for most of their writing backgrounds and art oh uh, okay i see a lot of them are yeah, in there I, I, and i'm kind of sad it's not, not like so like just there's one specific furry visual novel that's in there and i'm kind of sad about it because I saw it and I wanted to do it, but now that I found out that they use AI for it, like I can't, can't use yeah, it. Yeah, no, I get that. It feels like it feels like a genre that's very, like, easy to do stuff in AI for. So I imagine that's why people jump on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Still, kind of sucks though. It does. It really does. But, like, the only thing we can do is just not play them. Yeah. To be honest. But for now, yep. we are talking to our commander who was <laughs> who wanted to show us his shminess. Now that was not the commander; he's the engineer. Oh, right? the engineer wanted sh to show us his shminess. Are you? You are sharing the thing. I need to. Go I am not. I am not no, right, currently because right. I'm a silly Billy who forgot to do that because <laughs> I woke up late and started with a game that didn't require me to share the, the screens. But I yeah. see, I see. I just need to remember how to do this. There we go, and there we go, and it's a full screen. And also, before anything, and before we start anything, if you want to go, if you guys are still in the chat lurking around and want to comment on your favorite moments and like your things, the link is in the pinned message above for the YouTube side. Remember, all likes and comments help us be pushed into the algorithm and make YouTube a more furry place. <laughs> 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 At this point, oh my Help god! Spread, spread, spread that fur. Path, would you? <laughs> spread that furry. Yeah. Oh my goodness! All right, so without further ado, we do we do. Further we are ado, gonna go and jump in. In chapter two, we almost saw the it. <laughs> I like that we can rename these saves. Yeah. So you start off with you. Okay. We had. I, I'm just trying to remember what we did. We had. We were at the museum. Saw his dick. Uh, <laughs> we wanted to see it so badly. He was like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I'm. Not, I don't want to show it to you. But if my friend over there wants to see it, yeah. I mean, he can. I'm like, and we. You were so confused whether or not he was purposely flirting with us. And I was just like, he wants not, to I'm dick us down. He showed us his sleeping spots for reasons. They are out of camera view. <laughs> They're blind oh, spots. <laughs> They're all blind spots, Razor. He was feeling you out to see if you were, you know, down to clown with the shminess and the weenus. I would, I would like, if someone like in real life, like asked, told me like, hey, here's what I like to sleep. I would be like, oh yeah, that's cool. Nice. Hey Good Razor, you. did you know I'm I have like... like a couple of sleeping spots that like are pretty cool <laughs> and out of camera view of like some ports of this ship? Like, it's great. <laughs> you know, we could just like, you know, just sleep together or cuddle together or make out or sleep together. You know, just, just relaxing stuff. What was that third bit yep. again? Sleep together? <laughs> I mean, sleep like in the same bed. <laughs> I would, I would, Yeah. Oh my I god! I need like a, I need like a sign, like a <laughs> handwritten sign or something. You go to, to so you go to the sleeping spot. You go to the sleeping spot. Like, oh, this is a nice spot to sleep in. Why are you naked? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, like I sleep in the nude sometimes. That's why it's out of camera view. You know, like it's getting cold on those 
cold winter space night and we need to cuddle for warmth and such. Space you know, one, one long night. It's definitely a long night. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about entangled vines and quantum times. <laughs> oh my god! We had. I'm trying to remember what we did exactly after because we did the thing in the bathroom. I remember got, that. But <laughs> and after that, we had a conversation that was like a little bit more. We asked like about his past. Wait, we about, can look at the yeah. history. We can look at the history. Uh, let's see. Oh, he would ask us if we deserve a chip. If yeah, we deserved a chance. If we thought we deserved to be here. Do you, you don't basically. think you like if we, where's the question? It's up here somewhere. John Maddox. Uh, do we deserve to be where we are? Yeah, do we deserve to be where we are? Yeah. And we said that we did deserve it. Even though even if you don't think that it might be worth it. Even if I don't think I might be worth yeah. it. If you even though if you don't think that you would be worth it. Which is a great answer and delves yeah. into a phil- lots of philosoph- philosophical shit. But the fact that that happened right after that, that he wanted to show us his large hog was kind of wild. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to lie. Kind of wild. We're, we're, pocket, doing some, we're, like, doing some, we're doing some tone shifts here. In, in this a, game. Lot, a lot of tone shifts. We want to see his shaminas. I want to personally would love to see his shaminas. I'm, like, I'm, I'm also saying this it. because like we... We're like what ten minutes into the YouTube set, and I and I'm going to end up editing this at some point when I get more space, and I want to make sure that I replace Shminas with with something. So like, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna replace the word with meat. with razor. Every time we say penis, it's gonna be replaced with razor. <laughs> That's gonna sound even worse. No, Hold, um, no, I, I forbid uh, it. So uh, bed <laughs> high quality badger meat high quality badger meat <laughs> HQBM okay. all right <laughs> all right let's go Shminus. but at the same time I want to know how big is that Shminus <laughs> might as well run with it are you single <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm butting it already immediately. <laughs> good, 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 good to do. Can I ask another question about that? John doesn't say anything but nods at you and listens. How do you think I deserve it? Or that I'm worth the chance? I have not really done anything at all. And I'm definitely not anyone special. Razor, you can't stop talking about yourself like that. You are special. We love you no matter what. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? I. This was you, me. You. And I did like a deep voice Swedish accent for yeah, it. Yeah, deep Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say you're not anyone special. And you've done something. You saw my shmeenas. <laughs> you followed me into the bathroom. <laughs> you, follow, you actively followed me into the bathroom. A well-known cruising spot. <laughs> You mentioned something about why you deserve to be here. Regardless of what happened so that you got here, in some way, you're the one who made it happen. Or if it is just straight up dumb luck. I'd say just take it if you want to. The chance is there. That could be said for the reverse as well, couldn't it? Do you believe people with bad luck deserve the bad luck? Does anyone deserve bad luck? Damn, his distant stare is just like <laughs> concerning. Like, oh, <laughs> suddenly he's like, "Oh, oh Whoa. shit!" <laughs> Damn, um, do people deserve bad luck? No, not always. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, and good things happen to bad people. It's subjective, but I believe that when bad things happen to people who do not deserve it, it is our responsibility to try and change that. Make the world a better place. The world is not fair. So when good things happen to you, don't feel bad about it. Just remember to pass it on if you get the chance. Let's save that clip for use later. <laughs> what, are you, what are you giving? <laughs> just, you know, just like reassure, like reassuring, like motivational quotes. That being okay. one. I see, I see, I see. I thought it was like... Shminus. <laughs> Shminus. I'm going to label it Shminus. Shminus motivation. 
Thanks. Now, do you want to make out here or like, do you want to go back to the bathroom? You say it because you truly mean it this time. John smiles. Touching on themes of existentialism and determinism. Interesting subject. I'd love to talk more about it with you sometime. They're all hot, both physically and mentally, and I, very, I want to date them all. All of them are, are buff nerds. Like, they're buff that's... fucking nerds. And was that an actual <laughs> pipe drop in the background? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Was I'm a... just like, did you, did you play a sound effect? <laughs> it did sound like that, didn't it? What it was, was that? It was like, it was like my, my keys uh, fell out of my pocket, and they hit like a metal uh, tab uh, table chair. No. <laughs> table <laughs> leg. <laughs> It didn't sound like a pipe drop. It was very close. I'm I'm gonna have fun editing this so much. <laughs> I'm gonna have so much. Every fun. time you can't say shmeen this, you just do the plong sound. <laughs> oh my god! You remember one t one of the philosophy lectures from when you were still in school? Existentialism: the idea that you were born without any particular purpose, and it is up to you to make or find a purpose. Looking forward to it. John smiles and unzips his pants. You look mm -hmm. around and notice the bulgy bulgy in this. <laughs> you look around and notice that during your conversation, Max has already gone ahead and is a few art pieces ahead of you. He notices that you're finished talking and starts walking back towards you and John. The three of you continue the tour. Mike and Charles eventually catch up to you and you finish the tour together. Oh yeah, oh, everyone was there. Oh yeah, because we we got the job and we're like doing like a, right. a last hurrah. Yeah, thing. right. This is our our like celebration kickoff thing. Yeah, the shminas just took over it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like the 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 unexpected cruising spot took over like the entire thought process at that time. <laughs> My God, Charles has some input on the art. Not completely unexpected. You take a little break and decide to walk together to the nearby restaurant for lunch, rather than calling for a car. Ooh, double dot coffee. Lunite? What are you, he, sorry, what are you looking at? Oh, the right, the, the menu. Vanilla Drake's tea. Like, I thought it would say lemonade, but it doesn't say lemonade. It's like. I think that's supposed to be an E or. A, no. No, that's a U. That's curse of U. That's a curse of U letter. Because I can see it in huge. Lunade. Lunade? I don't. Lana. Luna, Luna Nade. Eleven dollars like for a huge cookie? Are you kidding me? That that better be a very huge cookie. That better be the size of my head. That be. <laughs> my that's God. Gonna be, that's an entire pizza size that's, cookie. It should be that picture frame in the background, the size of that picture frame. Yeah. If they say huge cookie and it's just like the size of your hand and that's it, that's not big enough for eleven dollars. <laughs> Because been two dollars for a cup of coffee, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. A double dot coffee, which I don't know what that is. What do they mean by double dot? Is it two espressos? It's, it's half a brain breathe. Half a brain two third of a brain breathe. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> You're silly. Oh my god. Ugh. But I think, I think it's like it's like lemonade, but it's lunanate, so it's like the moon. You know, also, Luna the moon. Are, do they sell alcohol? Why is there red solo cups in the back? <laughs> is that for the coffee? Question they have, like, mark. They, they sprinkle in a little, a little extra. A little extra. Oh, look at the, there's a little cake over there too. It's nice. It's very cute. It's cute. Eventually, you arrive at the cozy looking restaurant, and let me keep this shut up. All right. You take a seat around the table. You ended up sit, sitting between Charles and Max. You ended up sitting between two very large men. <laughs> While Max seems to be enthralled by the concept of dinosaurs, speaking mostly to the others and asking their opinions, Charles takes a slower approach to things. He turns to you for conversation. We missed most of it, which makes me a little curious about what you thought about the exhibits at the museum. Any favorite parts? Seeing the engineer Schminus was like the thought process. <laughs> Bathroom. Bathroom was so good. While there were some interesting pieces, you've never really been that into art. 
There were some interesting parts. But I think that personally, the best part was getting to know John and Max a little better. Specifically. <laughs> Specifically John. We saw him in the John. Having... <laughs> Having said it out loud, that sounds far too sappy. No, it sounds romantic. Maybe I should say something so he doesn't think I'm just sappy. That sounds pretty sappy now that I think of it. Why the fuck would you... <laughs> I should say something to make it not sound sappy. That was pretty fucking sappy, wasn't it? Oh my god. That is not a bad thing. We're all going away on a journey. And it will be a while before we get back. That's why people celebrate, or... Have an event before starting a new project or a new job. Kind of a goodbye to what has been, and as a greeting for what comes next. There is also the substance of a memory. The substance? A friend of mine has a quote I quite like. It's about uh, the perception of time. It's like soup. <laughs> Charles looks over to Mike, who seems to be listening patiently to something Max is explaining. He winks at the two of you. It might be better to leave that for tonight. Uh, and have him explain explain it for himself. It's one of those lines he he's quite proud of. I guess it's mostly a philosophical view. I look forward to that. That leads the conversation into philosophy for you, and you can't help but wonder. What's your favorite philosophical question? Charles actually lets out a chuckle as you ask him. <laughs> Your question reminds me of something I read here on Earth. Uh, what differs humans from animals? Aristotle argued this. What makes humans different from animals is the ability to argue. If you are trapped in a cage and with a human, you might try to reason or argue to, co to cooperate. Well, an animal will do what it needs for its own survival. But oh, oh, sorry. We, oh, yes. I think the audio uh, it could be my connection. Maybe that's weird. Maybe. Use, by the way. Uh, hello. Hello. I can I can hear you. Okay, good. You you disappeared from me for a little bit, and the stream Ooh. was like lagging. So I. Don't oh, know Razor, can sorry. you do me do me a big favor? Can you sure. can you click on your user settings? And In scroll. Discord. Yeah, on Discord. And scroll all the way down. Do you see where it says host? Does it say X64 on it? Uh, X86. Okay, so it might be because um, originally Discord made it so that whenever you when you downloaded Discord for the first time, it downloaded the 32-bit version of Discord. And most okay. people don't use 32-bit. And if you go to their website now and re-download Discord, it will be 64-bit. People are thinking that because of the, the weird connection news too might be due to that. Okay. Like the weird cutoffs. I just updated mine early, like yesterday. Okay, okay, I see. Do you want to give that a try? Give it it'll, it'll be real quick if you want to go if you want to do it. Uh, I would have to like re-download Discord, do you mean? And, yeah, you would have oh, to like... re-download you like uninstall Discord, re-download it. Okay, it that shouldn't... might actually. Yeah. You're not worried that's gonna take a while. Um. Again, this would be on your, your time. If you want, we could keep going. I just don't want like if it cuts yeah, off it, for you. Like, I think it's down. okay. I think like listen, since Discord and the stream cut off at the same time, I think it's my connection. Okay. So I think it's. I don't think Discord uh, fixing would help. I think gotcha. it's just. Uh, but uh, I will. I will let you know. Maybe I. I will. If it keeps giving me trouble, I'll just try to restart my connection. We might need to take a few minutes break for that. But it should be I'm faster. Good. I'm good. But yeah. Also, those in the chat, Discord six, sixty-four bit is now up on their website now. Check your check your shit. I still thank you for the advice, though. I didn't. I didn't know that. Didn't know I found. That they... I found that out like a few days ago. Apparently, they they made everyone download Discord 30, 32 bit for some reason. Oh. Which hmm. is weird. But. Anyway, while an animal will do what it needs to for its own survival, it will be it eat you or not. As such, it is a reason or a, the ability to argue and see or understand reason. I might have misquoted or misunderstood, but it was fascinating. If you only knew. 
Charles let out another soft chuckle. Charles thinks for a second and then answers. I enjoy mixing scientific ideas with philosophical questions. He has a look on his face as if sorting through ideas, deciding which one to pick. He then seems to settle on one. I told you about the quantum entanglement, Ariel. You think back to the lecture about the entanglement Charles held for you. In essence, two objects are linked and doing something to one can influence the other object. I remember. Entangled objects are connected so that actions performed on one affect the other, even when separated by great distances. He looks at you and lets out a smirk that betrays how happy he is. He seems happy at the fact that he taught you something. Well put. My favorite uh, philosophical question in topic would be mixing something like quantum entanglement with personal feelings or ideas. Reminds me of something you thought about after Commander Steele had told you about entanglement. Something like, can feelings or souls be entangled? He once again looks a little surprised. That is a great example. It's a romantic idea as well. It'd mean there's a soulmate out there, in a way. It does lead to that question, doesn't it? And if there is a soulmate, does it mean that the soulmate is the one through love? What if we're entangled to a friend? If you and I were entangled, would I be your friend or your lover? <laughs> Isn't Damn. that kind of a soulmate as well? Razor, they're flirting with you. <laughs> Razor, they're, they're, they're flirting with you. Okay, yeah, okay, good, good. I, I'll write, I, I'll, I'm jotting this down here. Tiger. Flirting Flirt. with me. <laughs> oh my god. Got my little post-its ready here. And everything. Yeah, it's everything. It's just on the computer, all over it, saying, this guy's flirting with me, this guy sh tried to show me it, and this guy is oblivious. Oh my god. I think Max is the only one who hasn't done any, any flirting so far. True. We'll probably see that later, maybe. We'll pr yeah, oh, probably. Different kinds of love. I like the idea. There is also the idea of, of how to entangle feelings. If our actions entangle our relationships, friendships, or lovers, or even enemies, then we're all entangled in different ways. The entanglement might just differ in intensity. Perhaps, but at, the, at that point I think it's not the same kind of entanglement anymore. I like the idea of it, of layers of it. I could be your soulmate or your best friend. And it could be because we were entangled. Or there could be a wide web of entanglement that started as soon as we got to know each other. I guess it depends on how one would view it. I think it's because we, we, we kept asking him to explain it further and further that he, his our curiosity was the attraction for him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, being allowed to, to having someone listen and be interested when you talk about something you're very passionate about is is like really it's really nice it gets your rocks hard <laughs> it gets your ghoulies in a, in a bunch but yeah no yeah it's honestly it's very attractive yeah mm -hmm. so either we're all entangled in different ways and our interactions and ideas change that and it changes us as well or the entanglement would mean that there's that one person you're entangled with and if that's your best friend or your lover I think it's quite char it's quite the calming idea either the best friend or a lover being out there and if you want to meet them wouldn't the, entang the entanglement make it so that they want to meet you as well I'd love to be entangled with someone oh my I god he's blushing, blushing. <laughs> He's blushing. He's just, you could swear you, that you saw him blushing just for a second. For just a second. As if he realized the innuendo of what he just said. You're quite the romantic, Charles. 
not the only one by the look of it. He smiles at you. There are a few more ways one could bend the argument. As if we were entangled, would we like the same person instead? But that's not much of a fun thing to consider. I agree. I prefer the first idea. I think he just explained how a dating visual novel works. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> this is all like foreshadowing. It's like, oh, you can become someone's best friend. Or, or lover. Lover. Wink, wink, or nudge, nudge. Yes. Doing you, the you, friend you... route, the, the, the sleeping spot route. Are you getting how... my, my actions I'm putting on you? I'm not like John and I will show you my shminess immediately. <laughs> we are but people, so we might as well go with the fun parts when we get the chance. I can't help but wonder, if entanglement of souls is real, how would one end up with the wrong person? The tiger is listening closely to you as you speak. Like Ooh. a bad ex. Are we going to talk about our ex? We are still pe but people. And even if entanglement is real, there's no saying feelings can be entangled in just one way. He looks you in the eye. I take it you have a story to tell in that regard. It's as if he can read through you completely. You sigh. <sighs> Might as well roll with it, right? Time to open the gates once again. We're talking about our ex in public with... How many men in this on this table actively listening? Four plus us, I think. Yeah. You tell him about your ex, about how it started great, but it was never real for him, and how in retrospect, he stopped you from moving forward. Like how he discouraged you from finishing the studies for your networking certifications. Or how he talk about talk bad about the few friends you had eventually tearing a rift in your relationship with them. This fucker had so many fucking red flags. Yeah. It, it's such an asshole. Is, yeah. My god. <laughs> Very much. My goodness. Of course, you weren't so blunt in your words when describing it. And he even called you out for being apologetic at times. We don't choose our weaknesses. And we don't get to pick what mistakes we make. You can just do your best to move forward afterwards. And the best cure to a broken or beaten heart is a stiff drink and a good conversation. Hopefully, you'll be able to get do a dose of both tonight. He leans in close and whispers in your ear. Trust me on that one. I am a doctor. <laughs> you can't help but laugh at that. <laughs> it's a fun day so far. I wonder how the laser tag in the evening will play out. It's almost like it's all set up to give me a chance to spend some time with each of you and all at once. That is the idea. Use today to make a memory. It is a change of season, so to say. Man, I would like to experience all of them all at once. <laughs> <laughs> you finish up lunch and Share chat one for sleeping a bit. Spot. Oh my god, that one sleeping spot is just a cuddle puddle. Honestly, yeah, I feel like that'll be a really comfortable cuddle puddle between all four of them. That would be super comfortable. My god. You finish up lunch and chat for a bit while digesting the food. After you're all relaxed, Charles ends up calling for a car to take you to the arcade. There's less talking as everyone's digesting the food, but timing works out. As you get to the arcade, everyone seems to be as lively as ever. So I've, I've talked about this a couple of times before, but this... Mm -hmm. Uh, this story is very much like we, we talked about how it's a bit of a wish fulfillment story yeah. you know and that's not a bad thing but it's just I don't think there's been like a single conflict in the story outside of the past with the ex true and that one outside. straight man yeah but even that was that was like something that 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 uh, you know you could wish it something really weird but I, I don't think it was intended like that by the story Probably. That was more like intended, like a like a cute moment, even though it didn't didn't work out that way. That's also that's also uh, another wishful thinking for like, for re, like specifically in college, where like your your best friend is a straight man, and like the first person you usually crush on as a as first coming out as a gay guy is like your best friend because you connect emotionally with him mm -hmm. and all that stuff, and he yeah. becomes the ideal, and it's wishful thinking to see if he wants to reciprocate that in a sense. Yeah. So like seeing through that lens, yeah, that's also another wishful thinking one. Yeah, I think so too. A wish fulfillment. Wish fulfillment. 
yeah, kind of. I kind of, yeah, I, 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 I know what you Maybe mean. it's like setting up for a conflict later because the conflict yeah. is in space, not on this planet yet. Yeah, and that's that's fine. Like, I'm not. None of this is a criticism. I'm just I'm just sort of noticing oh, no, that it's, it's like it's it's different from like I've, I've I haven't played Echo, but I've watched you play a lot of Echo and, <laughs> and read the story a little bit. And that's like. It's like very. It's a very different type of story. It's because with Echo, here's the thing: no one is good. They all have something bad about them, and that makes it their yeah. character. There's no such thing as a true good ending, because either either way, someone ends up staying, someone ends up dying, someone ends up leaving, someone misinterprets some things, and it's always different. Like um, what's it called? We just finished TJ's route and uh, doing the side stories and finding a little bit more information about them. Finding out TJ is basically er- like uh, pansexual. Finding out Jenna is really in love with Chase, but chose not to act upon it because of uh, uh, Leo. Mm. But she treats it like a game for her, in a sense. Which makes sense with her interactions during each route. Then you have, I like out of all of them, that's so far how far I got. The interaction between T T J Chase and like Jenna Chase and then Leo Chase, it's all revolving around the fact like Chase is the worst guy of the bunch out of all of them. I personally think that like if Chase wasn't there, they would have done they would have been better off. In a sense, which is kind of grim, grim for a story when it's like your your main character is like the the catalyst of a lot of the bad things that happen. Yeah. Also, spoilers for anyone who didn't finish route. You find out TJ like in TJ's route that Chase did kill Sydney, and TJ blocked it out of his memory, and so did Chase. And then late, later, when Flint finds out, you Chase kills Flint, and then do the same thing again in a repeating circle of forgetfulness. And that's oh, what they mean by like you're walking in circles. You're doing the same thing over and over again. Starting from Sydney, killing him, forgetting about it, and then five years, five years later, doing the same thing to Flynn, and then forgetting about it and moving on. It's while well, Echoes like like a it Echoes his own thing because of the psychological horror background. Yeah, like it does it well. And now I got what another psycho another few psychological horrors that I have to go through. <laughs> Even the individual novel we played like earlier, that's a psychological horror, and I didn't know. I thought it was a cute yes, camping the, the thing. One, yeah, the it's, one it's, it's camping. Yeah. Really? It's labeled as a psychological horror. They labeled oh, it no. as such. <laughs> so we're just in the beginnings of it. So yeah, we only oh, we just reached no. chapter two. So there's more chapters to come. But yeah, before we, I, I we guess, go too like, far. Yeah. Visual novels is like a cool. I guess it's a cool medium for psychological horror, just because there are so many dating visual novels. Yeah. So taking but, that and putting like a dark spin on it, where it, you you kind of it starts off cute and about relationships and stuff, and then it sort of spirals into something darker, darker. and like scarier. And then it becomes more realistic and yeah, sometimes relatable, and it just horrifies you even more. I love that. I'm not saying that I'm I'm not tired of the romantic ones. I love the romantic visual mm-hmm. novels because that's also another wish fulfillment thing. Because like, if if I want to have to give an example, with uh, have you heard of Morinatsu? Uh, name sounds vaguely familiar. So Morinatsu was my first visual novel that I've done in high school and early college. It is a visual novel comprised of different, very well known furry artists. That came to a very well-known Japanese furry artist that came together to make this entire vision novel for free, and it stopped because their one rule, "Do not translate this until finished," was broken by a lot of people. I'm I'm not one to like say I'm not to blame as well. I've also downloaded the English version of it, but like a lot of it, it like it's a flip of a coin. If you do some one thing bad, everything. It's like oh. it's also wish fulfillment in saying that you come home during the, your summer vacation to your child, like your childhood home, and find out that most of your friends, your best guy friends that you've known for so long, are also interested in you. 
and like they know you like guys as well i'm just like that was wish fulfillment for me <laughs> Dude, like that's also yeah, the I time when i was like relatively that. single so like yeah it's, fresh game it's it feels like a very a very common trope the wish fulfillment the, uh, no but uh, not not just that but the the going home to your hometown mm, yeah meet up with your old friends did you, you play like did you play night in the woods yes i did i love night in the woods yeah yeah because that's like a different type of game obviously in terms of gameplay but it has like a similar story about it's, you know going home i to would meet still your... technically consider that a visual novel because it, we are living through the character it is i mean it's in some ways it is there's a little more like to it, gameplay to it there's more yeah. like exploration and platforming and uh there's more but but it is a very story heavy game like it's yeah. it's a story focused game and I, I i i loved it as well i thought it was great i want i wanted to like i would love to like get a to draw either draw or commission someone to draw myself as a night in the woods character yeah like in that art style <laughs> that would be cute they have a very distinct art style. It's a really cool art style. Yeah, it's like um, what's it called? Cut out. Like, it's, it feels like cut out paper. Yeah, like paper cutouts. And it's really yeah. cute. But before we get too long of a tangent. Yeah, this is a tangent. <laughs> this, this was a very long tangent. But like, I want to play some laser tag. Let's do it. <laughs> before long, you're all getting suited up to play laser tag. You can't help but think it feels a little surreal. It is. I'm right here. About to play laser tag with uh... a bunch of buff men. Well, people who aren't human. They all look excited, although slightly lost. This uh, reminds me of this reminds me of gun practice, although hopefully a lot less serious. No, no, it's deadly serious. This is <gasps> you better you better like put on your game face. Put your A game. Like... I want to get a bunch of us for a um, VTubers and just do laser tag. <laughs> would be basing that would be fun it's supposed to be very light-hearted the bear smiles besides even if it was a while since i last played you guys don't stand a chance oh mike laughs at that <laughs> am i to expect no mercy then max aims his rifle at the commander and fires the game hasn't even started yet i'm just making sure to get an early advantage is that a challenge? Never should have let my guard down, eh? Didn't take you for one who would shoot a friend in the back, Max. Friendships don't matter in the game. Oh, is that going to be... <laughs> no, no, I'm overthinking <laughs> it. I'm overthinking it. Are you thinking that this is going to be... Uh, like, this is, this is foreshadowing. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Max is going to backstab us in the future. You know how this could turn into a, a horror story, by the way? How? It's like if we're on the spaceship and all of these guys are like really horny for the main character and they start like turning on each other because of that. They start like oh fighting them and like they go obsessed and crazy. I thought and you were going to go goes, like the mimic route <laughs> from the, oh, thing, okay, the movie yeah. The Thing. So, like <laughs> when they get infected and then like they start killing each other one by one. Yeah. My God. They all get super horny for the... I have two hands, a mouth, and a hole. We could fit everyone. <laughs> There's room for four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god. You get a silly idea. It's silly, but... You quickly aim your rifle and shoot the commander flat in the chest as well. The bear gets a contemplating look on his face. And then a twinkle in his eyes. Aww, look at him. Don't expect me to go easy on any of you. Like, ominous? This guy's an actual soldier, though. Yeah, these are like, soldiers. He, <laughs> he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna destroy us. Oh, honestly. <laughs> John and Charles seem to be discussing something as well. They occasionally glance over to you, Max and the commander. You can't help but think that it's almost as if they're plotting something. John weighs, over, weighs you over. The commander seems to notice, but doesn't say anything. He gives you a pat on the shoulder and starts asking the game organizer a few questions as you make your way over to John and Charles. Psst, Raz. We need to team up. Oh no. <laughs> Isn't this supposed to be a fair match? That's why we need to team up. John sighs. 
if this is anything like shooting a regular rifle, we don't stand a chance after Max and you riled him up. One of uh, Mike's hobbies is target practice. He does it uh, once or twice a week. Pair that up with having practiced for years. Uh, I'd say, I usually say play fair, but in this case, teaming up is the only way to have a fair chance. <sighs> they seem serious. It's all in good spirits, of course. I'm fairly sure he's, he's expecting us to team up already. He, he uses the butt of his gun to knock one of us out and shoots us <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> he definitely knows. Charles nods towards the commander, and as your eyes land on him, you notice he's looking at you. He then proceeds to put the laser ta tag rifle up to his eye like he's taking aim. <laughs> he definitely knows. Yeah. <laughs> what about Max? There is no way he'd team up with us. Knowing him, he wants it to be a fair fight, even if there's no chance of winning. You don't have to team up with us, but it'd give us a better chance. What do you say? Thinking about it, the commander definitely seems ready if you were to team up against him. But what about fair play? Are you going to shoot all of them? <laughs> <laughs> Is winning important? Is this our next choice? Did we get a choice here? Yay! What would be the most fun? Team up with I... John and Charles or play fair? I would say I actually want to play fair just to see what happens, like to see if we have a chance. Do you want me to save and we go back, or we go down this road? We go down this. No, road. we go. We go down this route. We gotta. Right, so we gotta we're, commit. We're gonna, play, we're gonna play fair. Commit to it. Play fair. All right. They're definitely overestimating him. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> and underestimating me. It'd be boring if we all ended up bullying the commander. I think I'm going to go on my own. Charles chuckles softly. <laughs> we probably seem like we're plotting something here. Let us know if you'd rather team up uh, in the next round. Good luck, Ras. You too. They turn to each other. All right, how are we doing this? The two of them keep discussing tactics as you leave them. With that, you proceed into the game area. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. The game... Oh. <laughs> Laser lights and cosmic fights is the... Oh, that's cute. <laughs> The game organizer sorts you all out and you're spread out throughout the room. The lights are turned into turned off and you find yourself in a dark maze filled with smoke. There are neon lights outlining the walls. You take a deep breath as you hear the countdown. Three, two, one. The music starts and you start hearing the sound effects from shots being taken. You start by sneaking around the outside wall. If you listen to the sound of the shooting, you should find out where your opponents are. It doesn't take long. After a few seconds, you hear the sound of someone absolutely raining down shots towards an area. You suddenly make your way towards the area and peek your head up around the corner. You notice Charles hiding behind a wall, only looking up to take shots. I like how they're just bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> you look around carefully and notice John is also shooting in the same direction. You aim your rifle carefully and take the shot. One down. Ah! <laughs> Charles dodges behind a wall, out of your line of sight. Oh my god. <laughs> you can't quite make out what they were shooting at, but it has to be the commander. Now you c could sneak around and get him from behind. And then you could take Charles out afterwards. You eventually reach a good spot and peek around the corner. <sighs> <sighs> He's not there. You notice Charles seems to have stopped shooting. Silence falls for just a second. All you can hear is the music playing. And then you hear it. A single shot. The sound of defeat the combat vest does when someone is hit. How did you even... You hear a shushing around and... A shushing sound and Max stops mid-sentence. <sighs> Silence falls again. You fall back. As you're backing off, you see Charles sink around the corner. You make your way around and get sight of him. Whoa. You aim your rifle to shoot him. But just as you're about to pull the trigger, you feel something poke your back and then whisper in your ear. Shush, quiet. Stay silent or you're first. Freeze. 
It's kind of hot. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is just like, oh my god, big muscle man, just like behind you in the back of your ear, like stay still. You notice the commander raise his rifle above your shoulders. You can feel his arms around you. You watch in silence as he takes a shot, and Charles' vest goes dark, starting the respawn sequence. Okay, that scene is hot, and I agree. Oh my god. Yeah, Kato. My god. He pins us against the wall. The Use as big... a human shield. <laughs> also, also, do you hear popping sounds? Yeah, I do now. Is that normal? Is that... Yeah. Now, the... now then. You're not going to go without a fight. You plan your actions in your head. Duck down and then turn around before he can react. Shoot him square in the chest. You'll do it in one quick sequence. What's next? I win, of course. I wonder... You start your plan and duck down as fast as you can. It seems to be working, but as you start to turn around, you realize that this idea was better in your head than in reality. You continue turning around and get ready to shoot the second you get a view of the vest. The problem being, he ended up being closer than you had thought. You turn around, but before either of you can react, you face some, your face hits something soft. <laughs> oh, that, come on. Uh, Ayo? Oh my god. Oh, oh whoa? <laughs> Rar, X3 nuzzles bouncing on you. <laughs> soft and rather large by the feel of it. Wait, that's not what I should be focusing on right now. It instantly gets hard. <laughs> you feel time stop as he takes a step back and let one of his hands go from his rifle. The other reaching for his groin as he bends over. Oh no, you, you gotta you gotta kiss it to make it feel better, Razor. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, sorry. You say that, but this is your chance. Oh, it's, oh, it's fair in love and war after all. He looks you in the eye as you take aim. You can't help but feel bad as he raises his hand, holding the rifle in defeat. You win this one. Ah. Uh, sorry. You shoot him square in the chest. He seems to have recovered and stretches his back out. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Unless that wasn't an accident. He raises an eyebrow. I had a plan. That was not it. He pats you on the shoulder and... He starts walking towards the respawn. You barely notice your vest going dark. Oh, he shot you already. Did he shoot you already? No, I think someone else did. Uh, looks like the others have respawned. You can hear Max let out a yell in victory. Mike chuckles softly as you fall in line next to him, walking towards the spawn area. You're not a bad shot. You stay silent. Although, you should probably have teamed up when they asked you. Probably. Then maybe I wouldn't have accidentally, uh... Hit him right in the family jewels with your face? <laughs> I should apologize. Oh Sorry. no, my mouth, <laughs> it felt right onto there. I, I, I couldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> tis, tis all right, I'm fine. It's all right, because it's you. What does he mean by that? They're all horny for you. <laughs> <laughs> you surprised me a little. He looks to be in thought for a second. If you don't mind me asking, what was your actual plan? You let out an exasperated sigh. Plan was to simply turn around and hit you in one smooth motion. Problem was that I misjudged the distance. He chuckles softly. <laughs> looks like I'm the one at fault. He seems to ponder for a second as if deciding something important. I won't be going easy on you from now on. Ah, That was going easy? Next time my zipper will be down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but feel that I've made a grave mistake. He laughs once more as you reach the respawn area. Time will tell. I'll give you a head start. As you're making your way back to the play area, your eyes catch John's. He gives you a knowing look and nods in a direction. As you look there, you see Max. John seems to be talking to him. Looks like they convinced Max as well. Now. There's a mini game? There's a mini game! What? Ooh! Oh, I have to. Oh no! I have to aim and fire! 
<laughs> I'm shit at Valorant. Let's do it. Let's oh do it. God. Get your game face on. Oh my god, yes. Game Raul. Time oh. to go. Ooh. Three. We'll go. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Dodge? How are you dodging? Like, I'm what is clicking it? it? Oh. Oh my god, this is cute. This is very cute. All my training in Valorant has led me to this moment. Do it. Oh my god. Go hard or go home. True, you're right, you're right, you're right. Oh my god. You're doing it. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, Razor! <laughs> oh my god, I almost missed. I almost missed the dodge button. Oh my god. The fact that I have to hit the dot the word dot 30? <laughs> oh my I god. Don't know if that's good or not. You shot John five times, Charles nine, Mike seven, and Max five times. Charles got wrecked. Oh my god. Charles got destroyed. You destroyed him. <laughs> I destroyed him. Jesus he was he, it's because you, you we crippled his groin earlier, so we he was not hundred percent. No, that's Matt. Isn't that Mike? Mike's we crippled Mike. Oh yeah, that was groin. Mike. Sorry. Sorry, I'm getting the names mixed up. It's all good. Charles is the, the tiger man. Yeah, John, John's right. the one that's try to show us his big hog and like Max is energetic dragon boy. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. This is so cute. What <laughs> the hell? <laughs> yes. I think it's like it's so fun that this is like, oh, you have to save their planet from like an evil alien entity that's slowly taking over and turning everything to ash. Here's a laser Let's go. game. Like a laser tag. <laughs> it's practice. It's practice for the yeah. future when I have to actually use a laser. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> 30 points. Damn. Good job. Oh my god, I did not miss, I think. I don't no. know how much this is out, out of. Once all is said and done, the score was... <laughs> One-sided. You beat all of them. Even if you just barely beat the commander. That was fun. Intense, but fun. Everyone really let loose. <sighs> my god. We killed so they them teamed all. Up. It was it was one team was was us. One team was the, was Mike, and then all of the others were one team, and we still would still, we still won. Still won that. Damn. That, yeah. That's we, we can take on the endless white on our own. We can yeah. Do, like, give me an actual laser, and I'll clean your planet for you. Honestly. Hell Divers three. Hell Divers <laughs> three. My goodness. <laughs> the furry oh, edition. Furry edition. Oh my god. <laughs> There's a short break before your dinner and your final destination for the evening. You finish cleaning up faster than most of the others and take a seat at the table in the arcade while waiting. After a few minutes, you notice the commander making his way towards you. Hi, Mike. Hi, Raz. Did you have as much fun as I did? He smiles a broad smile at you that betrays just how much he enjoyed that. <clears throat> I might have had just a little too much fun. 30 points, yeah, a little too much? You seem as used to a rifle as I am. I used to do this often, a few years back. It's not too unlike shooting a combustion rifle. What? A what? <sighs> oh my god. There's a lot of things you don't know about your new colleagues yet. He notices your confusion. A lightweight rifle, usually used for covert operations. Is that the kind of rifle you usually practice with? He raises an eyebrow. Someone told you about that? <clears throat> it's not one of my go-to weapons, but I tend to practice with a few different ones whenever I get the chance. If you'd like, I can show you how to aim properly sometimes on the Firefly. You can't help but think back to the moment he was aiming for Charles during the laser tag session. His arms around you as you took aim towards the tiger. Was he just showing off? Yes. Yes, and it was working. <sighs> it was working so well. Oh my god. Aside from that, sounds like a good way to let off steam. I know a better way to let off steam. <laughs> it's, it's dealing with one of those sleep rooms. <laughs> and it could be fun. 
But I'd like that. It's not something I get to learn back home. In contrast to this, it's a little more serious. But it's a good way to relax and clear your head for a bit. He looks out the window and to the sky, as if he's contemplating something. Thanks for the suggestion. This was a lot of fun. Everyone really let loose. Sometimes it's easy to get too attached or focus on one thing. Troubles or something awkward that happened, like your face right on my crotch. <laughs> Times like these really help me relax and get focused on what matters, regardless of the likeness to what this simulates. It was light and it was lighthearted. Now that you think about it, when the two of you were walking, he mentioned that there had been a war. Must be pretty grim running around shooting each other for fun then. Although, he seemed like he was having fun. It's hard to compare it to something more real when it's so much fun. Humans seem able to take inspiration from anything. It's motivating in a way. You don't have laser tag back on Arctos? No, there's training weapons that are similar, but they're for military training only. We should be able to do something like this on the Firefly. In the recreational room? That would work. But usually I just set something up in the cargo space when I do target practice. There's more room, and since I usually do it at night, it's also a bit more secluded. Oh? Mm -hmm. More romance at spots? Night? Does the commander have trouble sleeping? We can help with that. <laughs> I can relate to that. Just lying there, unable to fall asleep. Something stuck on your mind, past troubles, or just the next video game. You spaced out again, and again, he's just there waiting for you to finish your thoughts. It sounds relaxing to do it during the night. One of many reasons. It's a date then. Huh? <sighs> you can't help but feel like you're blushing. Who are you dating, Razor? <laughs> Who are we picking? <laughs> you hope you're not, but it feels like... It feels like it. Looking forward to it. We dating. <laughs> Who are we going after? We have yet to have like an interaction with Max. Yeah. Oh wait, hold up. Wait, yeah. Uh, um, right. No, wait one second. Razor, this is Danny, 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 Danny on another VTuber. Hi. I, I don't think oh, I can hear him. Well, I was I, gonna ask you for your recommendation for liquor. Oh, for alcohol. Oh wait, let me hold. Oh, I'm gonna mute for a second. Hey, Razor, what's your favorite type of alcohol? Uh, do you drink, if I may ask? Ooh, I do drink, but not super frequently. I like, when I drink, I usually like sweet stuff. I like cider. Ooh, cider's and so good. Sometimes I will go for like some kind of fancy drink. I like white Russian. White Russian? Ooh. And there's also a drink, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like it's like hot chocolate with some liquor in it that I Ooh. tried once. And I liked it. That does sound good. Hold up. I can't remember what it's called, though. Song is called a workplace outing.
Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> then he's out oh, for a date, and he's asking for. They're asking for what type of alcohol I would recommend. <laughs> so I, I I I recommend the Angry Orchard ones, the hard ciders. Those are nice. Oh. I do love those. I don't know any of the uh, any of the like brands in in the U.S. But... Uh, no, it's 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 just it's basically an apple cider. It's a hard mm. an alcoholic apple cider. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm not too too much of a fan of like the beers beers or anything like too strong. If I'm just there to just chill, but yeah, that's what I usually drink. Okay, okay. So, sorry about the interruption. <laughs> I, that no was problem. that was out of I didn't know Denny would call me because like he never calls me because I was I was confused when you said like oh this is this is him because I was like oh I, it's someone joining the call no he and called I, me I, on I my could... phone okay <laughs> called me on my phone my bad razor sorry no problem no problem it's, it's very un unprofessional of me to do unprofessional no, no, you gotta you gotta help the homies out yeah all right. The two of you continue the conversation until everyone else finishes cleaning up and catch up to you. There's small talk, and eventually you all take yet another car. This time, the car ride is a little longer. John even manages to take a nap during the car ride. <laughs> Max whisks the commander away in a discussion about laser tag tactics. He follows patiently and gives Max pointers. Charles seems to be engrossed in reading something on his phone. You mostly look out the window and listen to music and enjoy the ride. After a while, you arrive at a small inn outside the city, right near a lake. By the looks of things, there's no one else here tonight. John did mention he reserved something. Did he mean the entire place? The car comes up to us. Oh my god, we're gonna get a hot tub scene? <laughs> we're gonna get a hot tub scene? We, you, you, you can feel that like, hot can, tub senses I, are I, tingling. I, the hot tub <laughs> senses are tingling. We're just gonna be naked and alone with someone. Uh, the car comes to a stop outside the inn. John runs you through the evening as you make your way inside the building. Everything's booked for tonight. There'll be dinner served in a bit, and then there'll be a bartender serving drinks. As is Von Q, a woman who you can only assume is the waitress greets you and hands John a stack of keycards. The rooms are all upstairs. All of them are similar size. John hands everyone a, each a, car a card. Ugh. Everyone a card each. Looks like you got room number one. The waitress proceeds to lead you into the inn, where a large table is set. You all take seats around the table. Before you know it, there is goods, food, and drink brought in. You all end up a little tipsy, drinking during the course of dinner. Everyone seems to be discussing the museum and the laser tag. You can't help but feel a little embarrassed as you're complimented on your choice of activity. It feels awkward being thanked for something like that. Now that you think about it, there have been a lot of awkward moments like this recently, like the cruising yeah, spot. Yeah, one time and... I followed the big badger into the bathroom, and one time I headbutted my boss in, in my new boss in his big crotch, his, like... his very big <laughs> crotch, very soft and big crotch. <laughs> Most of them are related to you being credited or being thanked. Imagine sitting in a hot tub or a jacuzzi with all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, don't don't make me turn red today. Oh my god, I would love that. Oh my god, is that another self-esteem thing, or are you just not used to it? Maybe it's the people around you. They're all so kind and respectful and hot. Maybe being in the spaceship with these people will be a pleasant experience, aside from everything else. You'll be going into space on a mission that sounds like it's from a movie. To be part of research and to save a world? And still, the thing that currently has your attention is that it'll be a fun break. With pleasant people. Somewhere in the back of your mind, there's definitely some hesitation. What if after you go, you end up saying something stupid or doing something awkward, like sleeping with your boss? You're definitely, <laughs> <laughs> you've definitely felt like you've taken water over your head. But everyone keeps reassuring you, even if you end up feeling like you're trapped and want to run. There'll be probably be some, someone there to calm you down and reassure you. How comforting. 
Eventually, everyone has finished with dinner. Almost everyone has split up and seems to be enjoying their evening alone or talking with someone. You could retire to your room already, but after that meal, you still have some energy. Oh, the upcoming choice is a good point to save your progress. Oh. <laughs> this is our chance. We're going to oh. fuck someone. <laughs> We're going to date someone. You could oh. go talk to one of your new acquaintances. Also, I like that. Please, visual novels, can you do that? Can you tell us when like a pivotal point is about to happen so we can save? Like, come on. Is that so hard to ask? <laughs> you could go talk to one of your new acquaintances. But who would you like to spend more time with? You fucking fly! Oh, we can't deal. We can't date Max. No, it's not. The, it's not Max. Okay, I see. Max is not in there. I'm sad. Oh. We can't date Dragon Boy. Dating Dragon is off limits. Dragon is off limits. Who do we want to flirt with? The intelligent tiger, our commander, or the engineering badger? Oh, okay. Where's okay, the okay, all so three? Like, where's all three? <laughs> also, the fact that we, we're playing awesome. Distant Love as a song. <laughs> all right, Razor. Out of all okay. three, who did you like okay. talking okay. to the most? So here's the thing. I like talking to all three of these characters, Ooh, right? Oh, yeah. I like, I like uh, that Charles is like, uh, he knows a lot about physics, and he's like good. He's educational. Mm -hmm. He likes to, uh, you know, explain things. And he's like friendly, but like straightforward, you know. Yeah. And I really like uh, John because he's like a big, big sleepy softy, and he looks extremely huggable. Right? Yeah. But I think I'm gonna have to go with Mike. Yeah. Just because he is, I like. Th this is like a, a thing. Mm -hmm. I like that he's like he's he's a very friendly, calming person. And he's a little, like, he's still funny to be around, but he also has, like, there's this, like, slight tinge of sadness, you know? You like them sad boys, don't you? I like the sad boys. It's <laughs> weird to say it like that, but I, I like, like I want to, I want to, like, I want to, like, scratch behind his ears and help him Aww. feel better about his sad past, you know? So you're the, so, yeah. so you would date Shane from Stardew Valley. <laughs> Have you played Stardew? I have played Stardew. Wait, is Shane the... the, wait, the who is he? The alcoholic, the one that you can say, I could fix him. Oh, okay. Did you date yeah, Shane? Right. No, I haven't gotten far enough to date someone. Oh, uh, I play, damn. <laughs> I've actually played, I actually played Stardew on stream with furry mods, so all the characters were like furries. Oh, uh, he was the um, uh, lizard. Lizard man that goes to the bar a lot and works at Jojo Mart. Right now, I remember him. Right, I didn't. I didn't get very close with him. I like. Mm. I mostly saw him being grumpy, but he was cute though. He was cute. Grumpy, though. grumpy. I remember now. Yeah. Oh, did you know they're I updating? Didn't... They're updating the the fairy mod. Oh, add, they are. They're they're actually updating. There's a temporary fix for the 1.6, but the original artist is updating the models, so they can have Ooh. the winter clothes and everything. Oh, nice! So yeah, we're gonna we might get some new things. I was, I was mostly like I started. I think I was mostly interested in what was his name, uh, uh, Sebastian. I think. Really, Sebastian? Yeah. I'm questioning all your yeah. decisions now, Razor. He was, he was, he was no. a, in the mod. He's a wolf. Yeah. Razor, and I'm, he's I'm, like, I'm questioning your taste in men now. <laughs> Sebastian, <laughs> like, really? But he's also like he's like he seems like a little aloof and like a little like you know, mm. and and then you get to know him a little better and he's just a little stressed out. You know, uh -huh. he just needs to open up a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't be the one calling you out for this. I dated Shane. I'm the one that like, I can <laughs> fix him. Which I'm kind of sad because like is Shane's route. When you do marry him, he just goes back to drinking. Oh. He stops like before you marry him. He stops drinking, like he actually gets better, and then he just goes back. And his room's ugly oh. when he moves in. It's an ugly ass room. Oh, no. It's so dirty and messy. But yeah. But anyway. You could our love choices aside, our questionable love choices aside. Yeah, so I'm gonna go, go with, with Commander Mike Steele. Ma Mike Steele, the man who we had already face full of dick. <laughs> ready with. <laughs> 
<laughs> I have. A, if, you, if you can face him at his worst, you deserve him at his best. <laughs> you have selected Mike. Oh my God! You decide to see to go see if Commander would like to spend some time with you. Last you remember, you saw him head outside. As you're about to exit the building, Charles makes his way over to you. Why didn't you choose me? <laughs> <laughs> he holds the door like for it. you and exits the building behind you, grabbing his coat. On your way to talk to the our sky gazing commander, about to go chat with him for a bit. If you would let me make you company, no, we're trying to flirt. <laughs> no, <laughs> he looks like as at you as if asking your permission. That sounds good. Then let us go. Damn it. I thought we were going to have some alone time. <laughs> <laughs> he noticed you looking around as you exit the building. Let's start looking by the lake. If I know Mike well enough, he's probably sitting somewhere on the, by the water looking at the sky. Also, I love the fact it's a snowy, snowy environment currently. This is yeah. such a romantic high point area. It could, yeah, it could. It's also like a hell of a, like, I'm guessing they have a really high budget for this entire space program thing where they, they have, have to. so much money. Because they, they're like, oh, yeah, we, we just get, we, uh, we got a new employee. We need laser tag. We need an inn to ourselves. We need restaurant. We need they uh, just, double just dog rich, coffee. Rich. Yeah. You want that huge large, cookie, that huge cookie? Yeah, we'll, cookie. We'll, we'll get 20 of them. You want that one? We'll get 20. Oh, also, people God. in chat are saying Sebastian is cute, though. Yes. Finally, someone well, who understands. Mm, mm. He's like, I told, I told uh, Koro about dating him, and she was like, oh, I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only one! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, my God. Wait, no, is, is Sebastian... No, Sebastian's not the one that's the, the poet in the beach. Is Sebastian the son? I'm thinking of two different people. Sebastian's the emo guy? Yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. He's fine. I thought you were talking about the guy on the fucking beach. Oh, What's Elliot. His, Elliot. He seems like his name would be Sebastian. Elliot is is annoying. No, I didn't I like hate, Elliot. I hate Elliot. I don't know. But, okay, now that I'm thinking, now that I know who you're actually talking about, because I keep mixing up Sebastian and Elliot together. Oh, okay. I see. So I like, see, I see. Sebastian, yeah, Elliot. I haven't delved into yet, but like, I know he likes I, frogs. I, yeah, he's like out in the rain, like looking at the the looking for frogs in the rain or something. Yeah, and he's he, like, he works on his motorcycle and all this stuff. And his parents are about to get a divorce. Are they? If you get the, like their level seven hearts for either one of oh. them, they have a shit ton of arguments. Oh no! Like fights, type of shit. And it's just like, why did you guys marry at that point? I mean, I to be know. fair, that happens to a lot of people yeah. who are married, like, actually. True. The streets are not okay, guys. The streets are not okay. You gotta take care of them. You gotta take care of them. Gotta keep an eye on they your need, straight friends. They need, they need a hug. Some of them need a hug. Some of them need Some a slap need in the face. Hug. Others need a slap in the face. But remember, guys, watch your straight friends. You'd probably be doing something stupid. I was... I was Okay, this is sorry. This is a bit of a tangent, oh, but I was thinking it, speaking, it was like a slap in the face. Yeah. I have been thinking that about like certain like internet communities that I've been a part of. Yeah. Where I've spent so much time in like an internet community and then I've realized that like I don't I don't like these people. I would Aww. if I had like enough money, I would I would pay them all to just stand in a line so I could slap them all in the face. Oh my god, <laughs> the big razor just coming in to slap them in the face. Ooh, <laughs> am I on that line? <laughs> <laughs> Can you slap me somewhere else? <laughs> I don't even have to pay you. You just pull up here. Like, <laughs> hey, weren't you in the front of the line? No, I'm not. I'm wearing a fake mustache. No, I'm the yeah. other VTuber type person. Yeah, I am uncomfy owl. I am I the uncomfy unrelated. owl. <laughs> now, I, do you want to spank face or or, or butt? I, I I I don't have preference, but I do like both. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I, I see that some communities do definitely need a slap in the face. Yeah. If you want to name them out loud, call them out right here, right now on my stream. I, 
it's 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 not like it's not like a small community. It was like it's I've spent fur. a lot of time in the StarCraft community because oh, I spent okay. a lot of time playing StarCraft. Yeah. And I had to like step away from it because I was I all I did in the StarCraft community was just like have arguments with people about the balance of StarCraft two. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> it was so spent so much time on the internet just like arguing with people who were saying, No, this thing is overpowered. No, it's not overpowered. And it's like Oh my god, don't get me started on the League of Legends community or the Baldur's Gate community. Ooh. Hate it. Oh, Hate yeah, it. It, League of Legends, I can absolutely understand if it's like, the... This person needs the balance more. No, he did it! He still killed people before the buff! <laughs> the fuck you mean? Oh, we're gonna nerf the supports again. What do you mean?! <laughs> Our lane is not viable anymore! Which, it, it's... The, and when you're Ugh. playing a game like that, you would I would like to think that no, I'm just playing the game. I'm just having fun. I don't I don't need to have strong opinions about that stuff, but it's impossible not to. It's impossible not to. Also, I'm just gonna yeah. say for everyone, my stress reliever is League of Legends. Oddly how, enough. How does that work? I put all my anger and stress into that game alone. Any any anywhere any anger or stress that comes from other things, I funnel into League of Legends. Okay, I see. I play Brand and Morgana and just say fuck you to the other support. <laughs> or now I play Huey. I play Huey support. It was just fun. Okay. He's a lot of fun. I want to play League with you at some point, but I gotta change zones if I do. Ugh. All right. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I will figure out how to play League with you at one point. Well, we, we gotta do that at some point, but I haven't played it in like three years or something. True. So it's... A lot of shit changed. But yeah. Charles seems close to the commander. Now would be a good time to ask about it. Are you two dating? <laughs> How did you end up knowing the commander? He contemplates things for a bit as you walk. Have you heard about the War of Aggression? The War of Aggression. The War of Attrition. <laughs> Put the War of Attrition on the board. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The commander mentioned a war, but he didn't seem eager to talk about it. Charles sighs. I apologize, Ras. I forget that this is a different world sometimes. The war of aggression was what one would compare to a world war. A few years back, Arctos was entering a new age of space travel. Of course, we wanted to explore the universe now that we had the option. His voice carries a hint of sorrow, not too unlike the first time he told you about the Endless White. We ended up finding out that we, were, we are most definitely not alone in the universe. In the end, our government caused what is now called the War of Aggression. The aggression coming from Arctos. You found other life and then attacked it? You can hear the disbelief in your own voice. Not us, per se. What, we, what used to be a kind of world government for Arctos did. You look up and notice the commander sitting at a bench near the lake. The shame and blame still belongs to us all the same. Our world was the one wanting to take what did not belong to us. During that war, I ended up in Mike's squad. To be honest, I hated him at first. None of his orders seemed to make sense and I was all too aggressive. Eventually, I calmed down and understand what kept us alive and what kept us winning you'll have to ask Mike about the details as I'm not sure that's my story to tell as he says that you notice him pat his shirt pocket as if he's making sure there's something there uh, there's actually a lot I don't know you arrive at your destination as you wish as you finish your train of thought Aww. Oh, he's sad. He's sad. Oh, he's a cute art too. <laughs> oh, he's what? <laughs> I'm wondering if like this war of aggression is related to the endless white somehow. If it's like the they created of the war or something. It was created because of the war. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's like uh, what's it called when when uh, mustard gas was made. Maybe it was like a means to an end, but. It did not go too well for them. Yeah, maybe. But that probably won't change anything. Our mission is different, right? 
We're saving, not attacking. And without asking, I'm sure there's a million things I don't know about that would explain things. You see the commander raise an eyebrow. He must have just caught the end of your conversation. Sure, it is a conversation for another day. Aside from that, you might find this, the history quite interesting. The past should not be forgotten. At least we repeat our mistakes. A price paid in sadness should not be paid twice. And so we remember our mistakes and bring them with us into the future. Poetry at this hour, Mike? Mike puts his hand up and scratches the back of his head. The night sky brings out solemn feelings. Inspirational ones. All I'm missing is some music. He nods at you. Did you enjoy the day, Raz? You can tell that the commander is a little tipsy, perhaps even drunk. To be honest, you are as well, and you fall face first into his crotch and his a- and your ass <laughs> into the tiger. I've had a lot of fun. To create a memory, right? He smiles. Something like that. You're always one step ahead. Did you tell him why we decided to do this, Charles? I didn't... I didn't tell him all of it. I figured I'd leave that to you. Now, who do you want the front or the back? Who, who is in this <laughs> Eiffel Tower? I'll leave you two alone in a minute. Here, Mike. He reaches for his breast pocket and pulls out a flat bottle paired with two small cups. He then hands it all to the commander. Fire wine? Oh, wrong person. Fire wine? It is, it's the last bottle. And I can't think of a proper time to give it to you. I don't expect you to drink it, but I figured you appreciate the symbolism. You're usually not this nostalgic. Thank you, my friend. I'll leave you two to it. Good evening, Raz. Mike. Good evening, Charles. The two of you stay silent for a minute as the tiger makes his way back up towards the inn. The commander makes space for you on the bench next to him. Want to keep me company for a little bit? To be honest, that's why I came down here. He raises an eyebrow. I'm a little surprised you chose to spend your time with a nostalgic old bear who keeps looking at the sky on a night like this. Baby girl, that's the reason why we came out here. Yeah. (laughs) He smiles again. We're into bears. Oh my god. Also, is there two moons? I think one of them is supposed to be a like a lens flare or something. It's just like a little. Uh, oh, I see. Now I see it. I was about to say. But yeah, we're, this is not Earth. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a pleasant surprise. I appreciate your company. He inspects the bottle Charles gave him. Gives it. Gave him. Didn't think you would be one for drinking. It's a little strong compared to what I drink. The rare times I do. Charles is usually not this sentimental. After our first mission together, he gave me a bottle just like this. In the time I've known him, he's been pretty sentimental. Serious, but sentimental. Maybe he's just getting old. You can't help but let out a short laugh. How old is he anyway? It's a little hard for me to tell, to be honest. It's the commander's turn to laugh. (laughs) I hadn't thought of that. I think he's in his mid-thirties. When I met him, he was almost fresh out of his studies. You can't help but wonder how old is the commander. Yep. I would have expected Charles to be the oldest of them. Like, he gave me the, the, the impression of being the oldest. True. Also, I think it's just the voice I gave him and the mustache. (laughs) Most likely. Probably. And I think also the fact that he's like a doctor. True. It gives him like an, 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 an older aura, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Hmm. You can't help but wonder how old the commander is. It'd be a lie to say you weren't interested in him. To what degree remains to be seen. But still. He breaks your train of thought with a statement of his own. Like... You figured today was about creating a memory, Raz, to make something worth remembering as a proper goodbye to this world for most of us. I've had a good time. Let's make a memory together right now. It makes out with you. 
There's nothing plastic about it. You've also hit him in the groin. <sighs> Do you really want to remember that? Yes. Thinking about it. It's not a bad memory. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> sure. Definitely not a bad memory. That's the way to look at it, I guess. I had fun, and it led to getting to learn something new about him. How, like, how big he is. Yeah, I was just thinking. I didn't want to say it, but I was thinking. No, you gotta say. You gotta say what's out. Gotta say what's on your mind out loud here, Razor. That's how this works. <laughs> Even mistakes build relationships. Thinking about it. You've been pretty sentimental recently as well. Perhaps it's because you're a little tipsy, or maybe it's because you feel comfortable in the company you're in. But you can't help but feel like tonight is a night to not really care about holding back. <gasps> maybe it's time to just speak my mind, even, even if my thoughts seem awkward. Oh, well, Commando, I am in love with you ever since I, I go face crotch your face crotch. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, come on! <laughs> Snowing? <laughs> I've been feeling pretty sentimental recently as well. I think revisiting today sometime in the future would be interesting. To see the differences. Knowing that Joe will be going away for a while evokes that feeling, doesn't it? He looks you in the eye. These times make me reflect on how I view bad times and strive to move forward. Time is but a string that grows longer as it exists. Think of what has happened as a mark on the string. As it grows, that which has happened will be behind that piece of string, which is the present. As the string grows longer, the mark becomes a smaller part of the string. It's about perspective. The bad times pass and fade, and remember the good ones instead. He finishes and stays silent for a second. Cheesy as it might seem, it's how I like to think about perspective. As long as you know there's a broader picture, the struggles of the moment seem smaller. He sighs. Hopelessly romantic, but that's part of me. Thinking about it, I'm also a hopeless romantic. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah? Oh my god, this is like reading a, like a romance fanfiction on the train to work. I'm just like, I'm giddy on the inside and outside <laughs> at the same time. They're not fucking. No, they're holding hands. That's what makes me squeal on a train. I read like yeah. the, main, the characters are finally holding hands. Oh my god! They're fucking dead face. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what I'm reading. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have been able to keep hope at times. <sighs> He's sharing a part of himself here. I like it. As long as you know there's another perspective, you can bear most things. You can't help but feel like you can share something about yourself as well. After all, he opened the door. Besides, I'm a hopeless romantic myself. I'm so all <laughs> I was about to sing a K-pop song. <laughs> I was about to sing Cupid. <laughs> Hopeless romantic all your life Surrounded by couples all the time That makes two of us He brings out the two cups and the bottle Charles brought He places a cup on the small table next to the bench Would you like to taste some Arctos fire wine? Your mind flashes back for a second To your conversation with Charles during lunch Ooh, The best cure to a broken heart is a stiff drink and a good conversation here it is, by the look of things. With your new motto, you might as well roll with it. Sure. Awkward re response, but the commander doesn't seem to mind and fills the two cups with a clear liquid. Oh, it's ever clear. 90% <laughs> <It's> <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> I really drink, but tonight is special. I just like the idea of drinking away our sorrows. But I like the idea of celebrating something new. Oh, he's getting closer. <laughs> he hands you one of the cups and raises his own for a toast. To hopeless romantics and making a good memory. You touch your cup to his and then bring the cup to your mouth. It tastes smooth, not like any alcohol you used to. You can't help but wonder if this is going to have an effect on you at all. Maybe it's just like 
what's it called methanol it's just methanol <laughs> and you go you go blind it's cleaning <laughs> alcohol ah! <laughs> oh my god i've really had my perspective change these last few days i don't really want to have that part of the string get smaller so to say so to say there's two sides to every coin for better or for worse I like to believe that we pick what we remember fondly, despite being aware of it or not. And if there's more good memories than bad ones, then Screw's per perspective. Perspective is what changes it, eh? With new perspective, the problems I've had recently all seem so distant and small. There's a lot of truth in that view. He puts an arm around you as you sit on the bench. Ooh! <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Cuddle time. Cuddle, cuddle. Cuddle time. Cuddle time. Oh my god. He's definitely getting drunk. And so are you. The fire wine is having an immediate effect. My god, to drink alcohol to go down that smooth and have a delayed reaction is scary. <laughs> you can almost imagine yourself thinking back on this in the morning. Hopefully not hungover. Thinking about how you let some let go of some of your inhibitions. You can't help but lean into him as he has his arm around you. I'm oddly excited to go to space. Kind of leaving the world behind and to a new adventure. Even if I know I'll be back home eventually. Oh, that's gonna be the sad part. We never go back. Excited for a new start or to leave things behind. Probably both, to be honest. Two sides to every coin, was it? Oh my god, the song is called Ash and Snow. Mm. That's even more sadder. Speaking of memories and new starts, I'd like to remember this. This is nice. It is. If I could filter out my bad memories like that, I'd replace them all with this. I feel like you should stop yourself from asking. But you ask anyway. Do you have a lot of memories like that? Damn alcohol. It's a stupid question. I already know the answer. His eyes betray it. Fuck, why did I ask that? He's not asking you uncomfortable questions even if drunk. And here you are, just going for the low blows. You begin to formulate an apology in your head, but before you can get it out, he speaks. Too many. The quote holds true. There are two sides to every coin. When people call you a hero, it just means you're the villain of someone else's story. The continuation of that line, there's two sides to every coin, is this. A victory won in a war is just an atrocity paid for, the, for in the blood of the side that lost. I have a lot of bad memories. I just hope that eventually they'll be part of a long string of good ones. You hear him say something under his breath. It almost sounds like he's swearing. Then he sighs. When I look at you, I forget about that for a moment. You're optimistic. And even if you don't feel it yourself, you'll end up being someone's hero. And you're no villain. I don't know what to say. Silence falls for a moment. Hopeless romantic after all. Isn't that similar to why you struggle? What do you mean? No matter who you are or what you've done, if you feel bad about it, or if you struggle, it's because you're looking for something greater. Something better or something kinder. Hmm. You feel sad or stuck because you want something better. Also, it's, it's, and it's also why there's no reason to give up when things get rough. You're not even sure yourself where this bout of poetry is coming from. But I can't say I dislike it. Thanks for the comforting words. He hugs you with the arm that's already around you. Even though you probably knew, you never thought the commander was this sad on the inside. Razor knew, knew, and that's what he attracted. Boy. And that's what attracted him to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe that's why he always looks at the sky. The freedom and to forget. It's better than drinking. Not that you can say anything about that tonight. Another question pops in your head. 
and your inhibitions are far too gone. You don't even try to stop it. With all that pain, what made you stick with the military? Hmm. I think... the layer of sadness. You're that sad? Not mine. The world's. There's a lot of pain in the world. Once you notice it, you can't really stop it. Everyone has their sadness and their pain that they carry with them. It makes me feel like I want to give everyone a hug all at once. And That's just... why I invented military-grade hugs. Yes, and just keep them safe. For everyone to feel good and safe and not have to worry all the time. So, I'm sticking with the next best thing when it comes to keeping people safe. I can't help but feel like a teacher could do the same. Maybe I'm a hypocrite. If I'm to be completely honest with myself, I don't want people to get close. Fuck. If you had any doubts that the bear was anything but drunk, they're gone. This is far too open, honest and open. I've said too much. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to get drunk and bring down the mood. That's all right. I'd like to listen if you'll share. He sighs, but at the same time, pulls you closer. He's warm and pleasant compared to the cold night air around you. I've asked too much. Sorry. Don't be. Sometimes I think I don't reflect enough. And drunk or not, I got to hug you. He smiles a wide smile. You feel regret as soon as the word leaves your mouth, but you can't help it. You also make a mental note to never drink fire wine again. Why do you not want people to get close to you? Silence falls for a minute, and then he speaks. I guess I just don't want them to break the illusion of who I am. I'm supposed to be a strong leader, flawless and fighting for safety. Not really supposed to be sad or show weakness, or get so drunk I spilled my secrets sitting on a bench next to someone I care about on a winter night. Oh, he cares about us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. It makes you more human. He raises an eyebrow. I guess that's a bad choice of words. Being human doesn't sound wrong. You keep yourself I mean, I from consider, asking I more. I consider being a bear an upgrade, but okay. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You keep yourself from asking more and give him a proper hug. He hugs you back. It's getting late. Want to go inside? Gentlemen first. He stands up and bows. As you stand up, and start walking, you have to stop once or twice. Just give us a kiss on the forehead. That's all I ask. Just one smooch. You're too drunk. Damn fire wine. The commander notices and stops. He puts around an arm around you and keeps you steady. At first, neither of you say anything as you start making your way back to the inn. This evening was not what you had expected. But it was definitely not bad. What's it like, thinking about leaving your home behind and heading into the greater unknown? There's always that feeling of insecurity, isn't there? I... I don't really have too much holy be here. Oh? Really? He is amazing and dedicated. He does not... He does an accent even when not reading character dialogue. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> My god. <laughs> <laughs> I have my colleagues, but to be honest, I haven't known them for all that long. They're my best friends, and I love them. But that's it. Never mind. Having said it out loud, I do love them, and I will miss them. But for some reason, I'm more excited about this all. Saving a world, going to space, learning about Arctos, everything. It's quite the adventure when you put it like that. Both of you fall silent for a moment, for a minute. It's like a new start. At one point, life really hit me in the balls. And at one <laughs> point, I hit you in the balls. With my face. And it's just like, I stayed there for a little too long than expected, but like, it smelled nice. <laughs> he chuckles at the likeness. 
His mind probably went back to what happened earlier today. You can't help but smile. But in perspective, it never was that bad, even if it seemed like the end of the world at the time. In my proverbial string of time, I think I like the mark I'm making now. I'll help you make it a good one. Mwah. <laughs> Mwah. <laughs> the rest of the night is fun, and you get to know everyone a little bit better. Familiarity breeds comfort, and knowing everyone a little better makes you relax a little more. They're not very different from anyone else you know. Turns out, when you get to know most people, everyone's fairly similar at the core. Despite the experiences that shape us, after a while, it is time to call it a night and you retire to your room. It takes a little bit for you to fall asleep. It's like the excitement of the day has to catch up with you first, before your brain can rest properly. Eventually, your tiredness catches up with you and you fall asleep. You seem tired. It pulls you closer. Long day. He pauses for a second as, you, as if for you to respond. After a little bit, he continues as if you had. I've had a long day as well. I hope your day was good. It was. I've met a lot of good people and got to know them better today. Not that he can hear you say, or rather think that. I'm glad. Somehow, I can tell that you needed that. He heard you? That's new. No. Not like the other dreams you've had. You want to ask how his day was, but once again, it feels like your thought echoes out into nothingness. But somehow, you can tell how exhausted he is. You can't help but wonder if this is what he mentioned before. How it feels, what, how he feels what you feel somehow. You hug him tightly. Supporting the people you care for is best done as a two-way street after all. And one thing is for sure, no matter who he is, it seems he cares. He sighs deeply. <sighs> it feels like we're both going on an adventure. Although perhaps of different kinds. He's right. I like these breaks I get with you. They help me recharge. Who are you? Despite how comfortable this is, there's still a question gnawing at the back of your mind. Who are you? I... Whoa. As he responds, you can't hear anything. You feel colder and lonely. It is strange. Is it a strange feeling compared to the closeness you just felt? Chapter 3. Echoes from the Void. Oh, shit. My God. Shit. This <laughs> got... Oh. Hold up. That oh was, like, God. creepy. I got, like, I got, like... Did, oh. I, I, I honestly thought it was like what's it called it was the commander and somehow we were we, we got entangled mentally and we've been sharing this mm. in the entire time but now that that happened what the fuck is that yeah who the fuck is that guy I, I was thinking I was thinking that this was just it was just foreshadowing and it was going to turn out that whomever we pick to date would turn out to be like oh it was you all along you know because it would be like oh we were entangled we were like soulmates from the start Oh. Right? It was yeah. gonna be like, you know, no matter who we decided to choose, it would be it would be that one. Honestly, this is so weird. Yeah. Also, this hotel room is so cool to, to the point it has a fireplace in it. Man, this is a <laughs> expensive cabin in the woods. Yeah. What the hell? You wake up in a silent room. There's sunlight leaking in through the curtains, and there's a smell of tea in the air. Despite how pleasant it is. You still feel a little off, exhausted in a way. Perhaps it's due to the way that dream ended. And the fact that you remember it. Yeah. Somehow it feels like the past few weeks of my life have been all introspect. Kind of like waiting for the storm to hit, huh? Oh, we're gonna about to get hit by the storm soon? Mm. We're in chapter three. For the movie to start, or for the chance to finally come to you. It's a weird feeling. It's like my mind is shut down and it's telling me that I'm waiting for something. Although at the same time, it feels so stressful, like I have to be ready for it by a certain time or date. 
Mm. <sighs> Pretty stupid when you think about it. Life is now, or something like that. Maybe it's time to start trying that out. Why not roll with it? Hmm. <sighs> Maybe that's why I always have this inner monologue? You mean this is not normal? This is not a normal thing people do? Like, I do this every time I wake up. Mm. Do you, ha do you have that? An inner monologue? Yeah, like, do you, do you have, like, an inner monologue? Like, Yeah, I do. But for me, it's like a lot of the time, if I'm if I'm by myself, I will start talking out loud. Like I will <laughs> talk to myself. Uh, I, so it will be an it will be same. an outer monologue. <laughs> I do the same. It it helps. I heard I heard it helps with like, like what's it called? Thinking things through. Like you're self reflecting in a sense. I also learned that's also an ADHD uh, thing, or uh, that, that apparently, and that, not no, what's it called? Uh. No, and people who are neuro neurodivergent also do that a lot. Okay, okay. There's a lot of things you learn on the internet, like that you wouldn't expect that you would find out about yourself. How, like, you find yeah. out that when you were younger, you were actually stimming when you were like poking holes in the plastic bottle containers or like kicking, hitting the be the grocery bag with your knees when walking. The small things you learn. Mm. But yeah. I see. I see. Are you, by the way, I have to ask, is there audio leaking through from you right now? Because my neighbors decided that now would be a great time to test out their new motorcycle right outside. I do not hear it. Good. Let me know if you hear it. <laughs> Will do. Because I'm preparing so much, just watching the world waiting for my life to actually start. Well, I guess the starting point is here. In chapter three. Yeah. You slowly wake up, properly brush your teeth, and get dressed for the day. You make your way downstairs to grab some breakfast. The rest of the Firefly crew is already there. I like how Max just wears his uniform. He doesn't have yeah. casual wear whatsoever. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of cute. It's cute. They have the little, little wing symbol, right? Mm-hmm. And I think, I think it. I think John has it on his belt buckle. I can't see it now because the text oh. box is in the way. But if, if I remember correctly, he has oh, he that. does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's an arrow pointing down to where you should open. <laughs> <laughs> you see these arrows? It's telling you to open. Tar tar targeting zone. <laughs> targeting acquired. We look at, at Max's arms. We look at John's crotch. That's how it works. And and I think Mike has it on his. He had like a little clip on his tie with the same symbol. We're looking at his pecs. <laughs> the writer yeah. and creator knew the viewers well. <laughs> There's not a lot of talking, and the excitement seems to have slowed down a little. Now that everything for the journey seems set, you find yourself in a conversation with John and Max. John seems fairly awake this early for someone who sneaks away for naps whenever he can. So, John lowers his voice. Mr. Good looking. He's flirting. He clears his throat. Press, what did you think of the entire experience yesterday? He winks at you as you as he says, "What did you do when you got drunk? Did you black out?" <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Whoever came up with the idea must have been a genius. It's your turn to wink. It's cheesy, but the badger smiles at that. You seem more relaxed now. Thinking about it, he's right. It's been quite the journey, even though it's been just been a few days. You adapt fast. That's a good trait. There's a saying similar to that that my parents always used. Kids are spongy. They fall down and spring right back up. I don't think that's a me thing. People on Earth always take some pride in that we adapt fast to new environments. Nifty. Speaking of adapting fast... Max, just how many slang words did you pick up? <laughs> Gotta get them all! <laughs> really? <laughs> Gotta catch them all! all. Gotta catch them all, Pokemon! <laughs> you let out a groan as John raises an eyebrow. Seemingly trying to figure out the meaning behind Max's slang. 
made your way to the 2000s. <laughs> I want to be the very best, the best there ever was. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this time you can't help but let out a small chuckle. More pop culture it is. The firefly is going to be lively as ever with you there. He throws a, po a, a handmade Pokeball at all of us. <laughs> <laughs> have to catch this human. I gotta catch him. It's, it's for the commander. He'll like it. <laughs> John lowers his voice a little. Max isn't the only one who's looking forward to it. It'll be a new atmosphere, a better mission than looking for help. And new colleagues. Looks like you're not the only one with a lot of introspective thoughts. Perhaps John's also waiting for things to start. And it looks like the start button is on those arrows above his crotch. <laughs> Max seems a little more in the moment, though. Perhaps that'd be nice. To skip past the thinking and being a little more now. But... That's not you now, is it? I also wonder why we can't... Why can't we date Max? I mean, we had little interaction, to be quite yeah. fair. Mm. But let's try for a little bit. I'm incredibly nervous, but it'll be fun. Why? I mean, you're not, though. You're only going into outer space with a bunch of people who aren't even human. Yeah, they're hot and sexy. On an adventure to save a dying world. <laughs> no biggie. Basically a normal Tuesday, right? Such is the life of our superhero. John drags a word out as he says it, with a hint of teasing in his voice. Superhero. You guys are old. Huh? <laughs> Max looks at you. Is this what they call boomer uh, humor? We're being called a boomer? <laughs> okay, Zoomer. Max groans. I'll make sure to bring some movies and books for you, Max. It should be a ton of stuff. Speaking of movies and electronics, I'm fairly confident we'll be able to play any media you bring on our devices, <gasps> especially if you help us with the networking setup. This is wishful. This is wishful thinking. Yeah. Yeah. My Switch works. My laptop works on the spaceship. Oh my god. In space. In space. I can keep playing Dishonored. Oh my god. My <laughs> life in Final Fantasy XIV will never end. How do you have play. such well connection? I'm in space, guys. <laughs> I'm on a spaceship right now. Quantum entangled internet. Oh my it's like god. Like no delay whatsoever. No de oh my god, no delay. <laughs> That'd be great. It'd be good to prepare, since that's what I'll be. That's <laughs> sorry. It'd be good to prepare, since that's what I'll be helping with, right? The badger smiles softly. Precisely. With that said, are you going to bring a computer or phone, Raz? Now would be a good time to ask about your phone. I'll bring a laptop at least. Not sure about my phone. It's fairly pointless without a connection to the internet. Everything's done online. John raises an eyebrow. <gasps> uh, yeah! Yeah! It, it's like, uh, we keep doing this, like making these predictions. We make a joke and then it's real. We, we are, we are, we, we, that means that the game's predictable. <laughs> So, like some moments guess, are predictable. I guess that's true. He's gonna show his cock at you. Whips out your cock. <laughs> Damn it, I was right all along. You should be able to have an internet connection. Might not always be active, but it should be possible if you show me how your equipment works. That's surprising. You'll have an active connection to Earth? Won't there be massive delays? Unless. Oh. <laughs> Yes, quantum entanglement. I was kidding. <laughs> I was kidding. Nope, it's real. But okay, it makes sense though. I mean, that's what we're it's, doing. We're setting the, up a quantum entangled uh, connection. It's that's the our blanket our job. term for any technological differences. That that's what we're going to yeah. use. Quantum entanglement. Yeah. Quantum entanglement. He smiles. As far as I understand, your internet is just a series of bits, zeros and ones. Setting up an interface that translates all of that shouldn't. Too difficult. Oh my god, we can see all of our furry porn. 
<laughs> we get up to date on our Patreons. I gotta get my new visual novel updates. E621, <laughs> my best friend in space. I'll set something up before we leave. If it'll make the trip better for you. That's very considerate. Thanks, that'll make a massive difference. That means we can keep talking to people back home as well. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Oh, pff, my bad. Did I skip? Did I skip uh, my bad. No, I, <sighs> I did that. Sorry, I got... Uh, something beeped and it distracted me for a hot second. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> hopefully you'll... Hopefully you'll even be able to stay in contact with Julia and maybe the, even the others. What my even be able to pick our movies from an online library then. True. An online library? There's those for Earth movies? What about books? I figure if it exists on Arcto, some version of it probably exists on Earth. Creatively, Arcto is probably the world that's lacking. Damn. So what you're saying is that there'll be almost an infinite amount of movies and series for me to watch? I should be able to set something like that up. All yeah, the K-dramas. <laughs> All the K-dramas. There's, like inf there's an infinite there's infinite number of series, but they're all canceled after season one Ooh. on Netflix. True. Oh my god, he can watch One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> all 1,084 episodes. No, 1,284, I think. I forgot the number. Oh my god. There's so many episodes. It's nonstop. No. <laughs> it's a stop. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Say it one more time. That's Pog. Say it another time. That's Pog. Okay. Now I got a clip. All right. Uh, I'm going to use that as an audio audio clip. <laughs> Sean will love that. Oh, he's dating someone. That's why. Maybe that's why. That makes sense. Sean. Right, John did mention a few of the other crew members before. The ones that are still on the Firefly, waiting. That's gotta suck, by the way. Yeah, they that get, they get they, to hang out on the ship. These guys get to come down here, play laser tag, and drink drink beer and have fun and eat cookies. Yeah, and and flirt with a handsome human guy. Human and the guy. others are like stuck up there, just like, oh yeah, we, we're just up here. We're just here. We're, we're taking maintenance. Yeah. There's Sean, right? And Tom? There were a few others as well, if I recall correctly. Then there's uh, Geralt, grumpy old boar and resident strategist. You'll recognize him right away. He has stark white hair, a scar over his eye, wears armor <laughs> a lot, and has a sword on his back. Yeah, one or two swords. One or two. On. Sometimes he, his eyes glow. Exactly. Don't take him too seriously. He's a softie, but it takes him a while to get there when meeting new people. I'll keep that in mind. Although it's hard to imagine anyone from the Firefly is grumpy after meeting you all. They're all grumpy. John smiles and lets out a soft chuckle. A small chuckle. Perhaps we just brought our best to win you over. Oops, yeah, all the others did. were jerks. They're all jerks. <laughs> you brought the hottest men back to Earth. <laughs> My god. Then there's also a few others. Frank, resident shipkeeper. Basically, he's the janitor. He keeps things running smoothly, replaces broken lights and such. It'll probably be more lively than I thought with the amount of people. It's a large ship. Personally, I think it's a good amount. You won't get lonely uh, unless you want to be. In which case, you can just sneak away somewhere. Like a, a sleep area. <laughs> <laughs> There's also Rex, Aleph, and Bruce. I doubt you'll run into Aleph much. He's another weapons expert, a mercenary. He mostly keeps to himself unless he needs someone to help him with something. And when he's not working, he's meditating or working out. Unless he's with Mike. It's hard to get to know him, but he's not a bad guy. Max just keeps adding input, but it's nice to get the extra perspective. John seems to be thinking for a second. Thinking about it, you two might get along, actually. You have the same feeling of calm. John sighs. And then there's Rex. I think he'll get along well. 
has the same thing you seem to do sometimes, where you're inside your head more than in the real world for a bit. <gasps> <laughs> just... How do you even want that? <laughs> uh, uh, my god. So, so what you're saying is there's just a, a full ship full of buff men and just one human? My god. So when's uh. that secret ending that we're going to get? That's just an orgy scene. <laughs> Where's that secret ending? You're not wrong. You'll like him. He's a nice guy. Very, very philosophical. The conversation continues with more comparison between you, your different cultures. Eventually, it fizzles down and you finish your breakfast in good company. The trip back to Broad Town and to your hotel feels... <laughs> I keep forgetting that's the name of the town. A bunch of broad shoulders everywhere. The trip You'll back have to, to unlock that scene after all three <gasps> routes. We have to. <laughs> we have to. Oh my god. The trip back to Broadtown and to your hotel feels surreal. It's like you've made a lot of new friends in a very short time. The people around you feel less like colleagues to be and more like friends you want to help. It's refreshing. But returning home has an odd effect on you. It's like you return to the inside of your head again and just wait for things to start. Things happen outside, your body moves, but your mind is somewhere else in the future. A journey to a distant world with new people, a new start, and some time to reflect on everything behind you. And when you get back, you'll have a chance for another new start. So you keep saying when you get back, I don't think we're coming back. I, I get the feeling too. Yeah. Kind of like waiting for the storm to hit, was it? That too. Also mentioning the storm hitting. It's like... Yeah. Wait, I I played uh, what's it called? Uh, Life is strange. I remember when the storm hit. <laughs> oh my god! I haven't played that game. Oh, you should. Uh, well, it's uh, what's it called? It's like a. Uh, I mean, I I a, know I'm familiar with like the the concept. It's like uh, a. It's like a of... fifty year old who wrote characters like a like an early teenager try to act like okay. an early teenager. I like, see. Like, what's up, dude, bro, friend? It's a, it's okay. My my uh, one of my mods, uh, Dandy, hates it. Anything oh. anything made by that company, they don't like. Oh, I don't know why. Really, I I didn't like 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 it. Like there's a lot of plot holes that could have been fixed and such. But like it's another. If we had to bring it back, it's a, it's the early stages are usually wish fulfillment type of things. Like using your powers to fix things type type shit. Mm. But yeah, we're now waiting for the storm. And then seeing what lies beyond. The day goes by fast, and before you know it, you are on your way back to the airport. It's a little less ceremonious this time. Eventually, you take your seat on the plane, and it's been a wild ride. Despite not going anywhere far away, it feels like your world has changed. It was that easy, huh? Didn't even need to actually go to another world to feel it. Perhaps it was mostly the people around you that changed. A change in environment, if you will. I wonder what it'll, what it'll be like once I actually get there. Perhaps like this, but with less regrets? Probably. There's too many layers to this. Ah. <sighs> Stop overthinking, was it? You rest your eyes once more, and before you know it, the plane crashes. <laughs> no, please don't be a prediction. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> we hope you have like a it was like... No, it looked like it. Uh, let me let me do the my best intercom voice. Ready? I'm ready. We hope you have a pleasant flight. We hope you have a pleasant flight. How was that? <laughs> was that accurate? Was that accurate? Kind of, kind of, kind of lapsed into the uh, the adults from um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the animated <laughs> Goofy <laughs> Go. It was nice. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> yeah. You make your way out of the plane and towards the arrival hall. You see Julia waving a large rainbow flag, saying, "I'm over here." <laughs> <laughs> I think. Was that just me, or did your sound cut out for a bit? Oh no, because I moved. I moved out of the way, to, pretending to wave a flag. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm over here. 
Oh my god. I should be here in a bit. Might as well find a place to sit for a minute before she gets here. As soon as you finish your thought, you spot Julia across the arrival hall. She's waving a giant gay pride flag to get your attention. <laughs> She's an ally, so guys. She's an ally. <laughs> <laughs> After greeting her and assuring her you're all right, more than once, you make your way out of the airport alongside Julia towards her car. Ooh. Her car goes through hyperspace. <laughs> it, it looked like that. <laughs> like, I'm, like it's, it's supposed to be rain. Yeah. It's cool. It's a cool perspective. Yeah, it looks nice. I just thought it was like, like hyperspace. Let's go, guys. We're transporting right now. That's such a cool. They did this in VR chat. Just imagine. I feel like this was done in <laughs> VR chat for some reason. Mm. Probably not, but like. I get the feeling. Also, the fact that there's nothing in the center. Oh, wait, I stand corrected. There was a couple that hit the center. Never mind. Oh. As you exit the airport, rain is slowly falling down. Very slowly. This reminds me of looking up towards the moon at night. That cloud looks like a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a hidden Mickey on the bottom one. <laughs> it's a lofty thought. Romantic at that. At some point, there's definitely someone else somewhere else looking up at their moon. That is so romantic, but like so cheesy. <laughs> hey, you're looking it's, up in the yeah, sky? It, 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 Are you looking at the moon too? No, it's the sun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. We're miles apart. Time zones. <laughs> Time zones is a thing. I completely forgot. <laughs> My eyes are burning. <laughs> Should I stop looking now? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> some other night at some other place thinking the same thing. It has the same feel looking up towards the rain like this. Somewhere someone else is looking up towards the rain. It's hailing over here. <laughs> Can I stop looking up? <laughs> it's, it's just it was, Mike. It was snowing a little bit here today. Ooh. Yeah. It's like it's it's like it can't it's April weather so it can't decide if it wants to be spring or snow or what it is so forever it just keeps going snow. back and forth. It's just forever. Snow. It was super warm. It was like t-shirt weather a couple of weeks ago and now it's snowing again. Oh my god, it's same. It was like tank top and shorts weather and now it's rainy and muggy. Oh, oh my god! If they show what us a picture of Mike in? and muggy. Oh. If they show us Mike looking up at the sky right after this, I swear to God. Oh. Oh, that's your prediction. That's my prediction. It's humans, not going to happen. Humans are weird like that. Always looking for connections and signs. But it's kind of comforting. Uh, they learn about our brain breathe and stopped using ellipses and actually typing in sigh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but get nostalgic on gray days like these. It's like if the world is saying that this chapter is over and a new one is starting. Kind yeah, of, chapter three. Yeah, chapter three. Kind of romantic, isn't it? At the same time as the thought crosses your mind, you finally release your that breath that you never realized you were holding. Your face was purple. It's like as if time starts. To <laughs> I forgot to do a brain breathe for like two hours. <laughs> I just heard like <laughs> in my ear. Oh my god. My dude, main character, choking. <laughs> Julia's like, are you okay? Is everything all right, dear? You're turning purple. Forgot to breathe on the plane. <laughs> oh my bad, I, I, I couldn't breathe for a second. What? <laughs> it's like, as if time starts to speed up ever so slowly. The tension easing up. <sighs> <sighs> I can't help but wonder if Mike feels the same way on days like these. I swear to God. I swear to God. <laughs> Probably. He's a nostalgic bear, that's for sure. And he would want to teach me all about why it's gray when the sun is obscured by the clouds. Less light, ma light, light making it through, right? Ah. <sighs> 
Does it rain like here on Arctos? It's actually acid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's ash now. It's, it's full of ash. Yeah. Without similar, both worlds seem... It's not that far-fetched. Is it? <laughs> if there's someone else looking up at the same rain somewhere else, would that person know that I'm thinking about them? No. no yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. no you are. This character is way too romantic. Yeah. It's like... Oh, I can feel the quantum entanglement in the Oh ring. my god. This man is a hopeless romantic. Jesus. Yeah. This dramatic ass game. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Mora. Oh my I... god. Maybe even someone on Arctos. Mm. <sighs> Maybe thinking about someone else is what entanglement is or how it shows. And then a flashback to the memory of. Our face landing for head first into <laughs> Mike Steele's soft crotch. Large soft crotch. Mora, you missed that. But anyway. If two people can be entangled, that is. Being entangled with him, that wouldn't be bad. Not bad at all. Julia is just patiently waiting for you to come. At the same time. No! Oh, no! I was right! Are doing it! Are they actually doing I it? I fucking hate this. <laughs> Well, we, we haven't we haven't like complete confirmation yet. Oh but my we, god! We, we... Good night, Charles. <laughs> I'm gonna look up at the sky now. <laughs> Good night, Charles. Don't stay up working too late. Good night, Mike. Uh, I'm just going to finish this up. Then I'll be heading to bed as well. Things will be moving fast this week. We'll be on our way home before we know it. I'm looking forward to it. We're fucking the bear. <laughs> Mike waves Charles a goodbye as he leaves and closes the door behind him. He, oh, it's me this time. Oh, yeah. He's right. Things will be moving fast. It's a weird feeling. It's a weird feeling saying goodbye to a world that isn't home. As a bit. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> ah! Why am I right? Why am I right? As a bear steps out the door, he notices the slow rainfall and looks up towards the sky. Oh, you do you want to read these parts out while I'm doing the bear? Okay, okay, yeah, I can, yeah, I can, I can read it. Okay. As the bear steps out the door, he notices the slow rainfall and looks up towards the sky. I should bring an umbrella. Walks away. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasant goodbye. Earth has been a nice home for the short time I've been here. Not like Arctos, but. I wouldn't mind having been born in this world if I had to. Even if it is a gray world compared to home. And it's filled with different people. Everyone seems to have a strong will. I wonder if Raz has similar thoughts when he thinks <laughs> he's thinking about Arctos. I'd like to show him just how colorful the world can be, if possible. Perhaps it's selfish. It's a selfish thought. But... I'd like to hear his thoughts and what he'd think if he saw it. I wonder if he's looking at the sky right now. Up, oh, it's stopped raining. <laughs> the Arctonian sky. Oh, they, yeah, the color changed. Ooh. Because, like, the, there's different, the sky has a different color. Now it's back oh, to me. You know what I realized, by the way? What? It's like all the characters have a transition screen, and then there's, like, the rocket. Yeah. So the rocket is like our transition screen. Oh. That's like the main character's transition. So it's our dick. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's just what it looks like. Maybe, Maybe our just like main character we're, we're, is just like we're a... ready. We're ready for space. Dick out. <laughs> about to fly. Oh my god. Uh, Julia wakes you from your daydreaming as you reach the car. Long week? A fun one. I'll drive you right home. Home stretch, so to say. Ah. <laughs> Come on. That was a good pun. So, did you fuck the bear? <laughs> Please drive safely. I know you can't say much, but how was it? Was it all that you thought? It wasn't what I expected at all. The entire thing is way more complicated than I ever could have imagined. 
Damn, wait, hold up. Hold the fuck up. Julia, do you hold your steering wheel like this? Yeah, she does. Under, is underhand that, is that, it? Is that bad? Do you underhand it like that? Do you not grip it like from the front on like turning? No, it, it like, uh, oh, you like what? Her, her left hand is just like under. Oh, right. I mean, I think I do sometimes do you do if that? I like lean back a little bit. Do you just grip but it no, like that? I didn't no, see. I don't, I don't know. Not really. Damn. I just, like, I guess, I don't know. Maybe sometimes. Razor's so tall, really he has to lean it. back. Now, now it's going to be one of those things where I'm, like, thinking about you it. You hear in the back of your head, you hold your driving wheel like that? Mm, Razor! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't what I expected at all. The entire thing is way more... Oh, yeah, I did this one. Yeah. It's definitely a chance I'll never get again. Sad, right? I told you, G Jules rules would win. Ah, I'm glad I'm going, but it's scary. I'll be gone for a long time on a super secret job. You'll be fine. You're the best there is when it comes to networking. That's a job after all. So, uh, Julia? Yeah? When I get back, do you think I can interview for my job back? She doesn't respond. Instead, she starts laughing out loud. <laughs> She lasts for almost a minute before you finally get your response. You won't even have to interview, you know. Besides, I'm gonna call you every week. You're not getting rid of me that easily. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's comforting and unsettling at the same time. A few more minutes in the car and Julia comes to a stop outside your house. She knows exactly where she, you live. Welcome <laughs> home. You step out of the step car oh. and grab your bag. Just as you're about to say goodbye, Julia grabs your attention by clearing her throat. <laughs> For a second, I thought that said, Julia grabs your throat. And I was like, wait, what? Before you go, Julia just reaches for your throat and grips it and pulls you right in front of her. I almost forgot. I have something for you. Throws you on the ground and goes back into the car. <laughs> she looks around in her bag until she finds it. The gift is wrapped and shaped almost like a book. It's a book full of condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Open it when you're at your new office, all right? Yes, ma'am. Why oh, she's so serious? <laughs> <sighs> this isn't some kind of drug you're making me smuggle, is it? Caught red-handed. It's something to remind you of home. If you get homesick, it's weed. <laughs> it's Mary Jane. It's the roach. Thanks, Julia. <laughs> Why was I, I was about to say, ain't no thing like a chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> she smiles at that. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> Will you be coming by the office at some point this week? I was actually planning to keep working as soon as I finished packing my stuff. She looks a little surprised. Ever reliable. You don't need to stress, to stress it too much. Take your time, Raz. I can't help it. I always feel like I need to do my best. I don't want to disappoint anyone, you know? I hope this doesn't translate to your, your time in the ship. <laughs> it's not like you'll disappoint anyone here. We're all excited for you. Besides, you already made it, if you think about it. It's not like you're waiting for your life to truly start or something. That'll be stupid. <laughs> Just existing <laughs> for a while is fine. Ah. <sighs> Thanks, Jules. She smiles at you. Good night, Raz. Good night, Julia. Thanks again. No problem. She speeds off 90 miles per hour away from the house. <laughs> you close the door as she drives away at the speed of light. As you step inside, you're greeted by the familiar smell of home. I wasn't even gone for that long. Still, it is noticeable that you've been away from home. Everything seems... Dusty, even though it's not. The air smells different, even though it smells like home, and the entire place feels empty somehow. You take a quick shower before heading to bed. It's refreshing. It's refreshing. Your entire body feels lighter. And as you lay your head down on your pillow, you finally feel like you're back at home. And then you hear a notification from the Illegal Legends game that you left open the entire time. <laughs> Hey, you up? You, you want to play League? Game. 
three days. You have been banned from League of Legends. <gasps> I'm free. <laughs> I wonder if that's how I'll feel when I come home after being away for so long. Not coming home. <laughs> oh, I get the feeling too. He's never coming home. Oh. You once more find yourself in a conversation with someone in your dreams. It's more of a conversation this time than just a feeling of a person. Something more real. Sounds like you'll be gone for a long time then. Will you be surrounded by people you can trust? That's a good question. I think so. I haven't known them for too long, but the ones I've met... Good. That will take you far. Further than the stars, with some luck. Spread your wings, but don't stay too f don't stray too far. There's a sigh. You can't see it, but you can feel it. If you ever feel stuck, call for help, and I'll come find you. Who are you? Yeah, what was this? That's a romantic uh, thought. No, wait. <laughs> I don't even know who you are. Who are you? To me, you feel familiar somehow. You're almost, most likely a figment of my imagination. Not even real. You think so? <sighs> you feel a knife plunge into your stomach. Is this real? <laughs> <laughs> Depends. Realistically, yes. But thinking about it, I'd be a lot happier if you were real. Do you? You don't have people who care for you. I do, but... I don't know how to explain it. Even though I have people who care for me and I care for them, I want something more, something else, perhaps. You want that romantic. Yeah. One that you, you can't get from. <laughs> you want to be quantumly entangled with another man. Yeah. In the sheets. <laughs> you do have people who care for you. And you care for them. But there is that one thing you're missing. Yeah. <laughs> Romance. Maybe. Suddenly, the world begins to darken in front of your eyes. Oh. Looks like it's time to wake up. I hope I get to see you again, regardless if I'm real or not. You have such an active imagination, and yeah. like, like like that, whoever the fuck that was is very concerning. And that yeah, that was very like the last conversation we had with that person was very ominous. It ended very ominously. Yeah. And this one seems like it's a lot more friendly and sort of leaning more towards you know my first idea that it's going to turn out to be like you know someone we're romantically entangled with. with. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna have to choose between Mike and this entanglement person. Mike and head ghost. Head ghost. That ghost probably gives good head. <laughs> <laughs> Being a head ghost and all. Ooh, that was corny. This <laughs> the coming week passes quickly, despite the constant rain that seemed to last all week. Oh, you can actually see the rain animation. Yeah. That's cute. Life is some like if someone turned on a switch and the rain just won't stop. We're in The Sims 4. We, we used our magics to create rain. <laughs> can you create rain in Sims 4? Yeah, you can. Uh, what's it called? You could put in, type in the command to make it rain. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. That's a constant in a way. Nobody can stop the rain from falling. Stops the rain from falling. <laughs> There's an uncomfortable feeling that you can't shake. Who the fuck was that man in my dreams? Things yeah. are changing. <laughs> yeah. And even though you want them to, it's still scary. It's new and unknown. But... Something's just happened. Despite it not being fun, the only thing I can do is make the best of it. Like relaxing inside as it rains, listening to the rain hitting the window as you read a good book. The rain is still there, but it's much more comfortable. Like it's providing comfort instead of just getting me wet. Rass, you're a hopeless romantic. Aside from that, these last few days have been fun, but there's one thing that's been made clear. Trying not to overthink and always keeping an internal monologue is exhausting. <laughs> it's a way to let things out after all. You finish packing without issue, sorting most of your things into boxes and putting the boxes away. You know it'll all most likely be here when you come back, but still, putting your things away somehow feels right. No, it's not. It's not going to be here when you come back. <laughs> mm. 
Oh my god. Being realistic, you are going far away. And there's no way space travel is without risk. What if I don't make it back? Oh, there you go. If something happens, or if I even for some reason can't make it back, stuck in space or even on Arctos, it's a scary feeling, but for some reason it's not as worrisome as it is scary. I can't really put my finger on it. I guess it's just how some things are. Rocket ship. Rocket ship. But you know it. The wait has passed. Before you know it, the wait has passed. But you know it. No. <laughs> You're all packed up and ready to turn a new chapter. You make some breakfast with the last ingredients you have at home. It's definitely nowhere close to how good the eggs and bacon you made the day when all this started. That seemingly normal, slow day, which apparently was filled with adventure. It's not even a month ago at this point, despite how far away it feels. As you finish up your breakfast, you grab your bag and to head out to your final day of work. Your phone rings. Don't come to work! <laughs> it's... it's Mike. It's Mike. Oh, pfft. you pick up your phone. <laughs> Good morning, Raz speaking. Morning, Raz. You doing all right? A little nervous, but other than that, I'm doing just fine. He chuckles at that. <laughs> I can imagine. We're making you do some something that's pretty out of this world. Ha. <sighs> mm. You can't help but laugh a little at his pun, as bad as it is. Raz, I'm calling to you... I'm calling to say that I'll be coming to pick you up at around lunchtime. I was thinking we'd grab a bite, then head to the Firefly together. You're not in Broadtown, then? Not anymore. I figured it'd be easier to just come pick you up and head directly to the Firefly from where you are. How? Quantum entanglement. <laughs> we'll just move <laughs> the shuttle. It's not like how combustion-driven rockets work. I'll talk, I'll talk you through it as we're heading there, if you want. I'd say that it sounds surreal, but at this point, I'm ready to just accept it as a fact. Good. <laughs> you'll be you'll fine, be fine Raz. Raz. Oh, oh, sorry. That You're telling yourself, you'll be fine, Raz. It's okay. <laughs> you'll be fine. We'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine, Raz. I'll see you at lunch then. See you then, Mike. Bye-bye. Speaking of, speaking of lunch, yeah. um, I have not had a chance to eat dinner yet. Do you want to so, call it a night, then? Yes, if it's okay with you, I would like to call it a night pretty soon. I am perfectly fine with that. We could call it a night here, if anything. It seems like a good yeah. spot, right before we travel. Yeah, I think this, this feels like a good spot. Yeah, so let's save. Do, do, do. So many saves happening. Yeah. We love this. Ubu Big Wait, no, we're in chapter three. <laughs> Hold up, that's not Ubu Big Boy anymore. No. <laughs> there we go. I named it weird ass shit. And we saved. Then we go to here. And then we open the gallery. And then we go to the, the, the CG viewer. And then we go to the one we. We're not, not this one, but like this one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, yeah. For those he's who smiling. are here, he's smiling. For those who have stayed, thank you all for watching. For those on the YouTube end, I'm going to wait for it to catch up just a bit. So, for those watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. I hope you stay comfy, cozy in the Sawa Cottage. We will be ending the YouTube stream over here when we go on our BRB screen. And when we return, we should be playing Stardew, Va uh, Stardew Valley with Lox Boyo, the boyfriend. And hope we're on almost like to year two. We're on year, we're just at the end of winter and we made too, so much money. But like that that's luck at that point. But yeah, Razor, thank you again for joining. Thank you so much for having me as usual. Yes. And most likely we will plan hopefully plan something for the next month. As next week we will not be streaming any visual novels or anything because we will be in Canada at the time. So yeah. For those on Twitch, we will be taking our one our our, la our only one hour break so we can go eat lunch and rest for a bit so yeah so everyone on both ends stand up stretch get some water get some food 
I'll see I the Twitch gone. side. <laughs> on the Twitch side, I'll see you guys later. On the YouTube, have a great time. All right, and Razor, go get some pizza. Let's go get some pizza. Let's go.